like 85% dead and people are like, if you don't want to stream today, that's okay. And I'm like, yeah, no kidding. I'm fighting for my damn life out here. Every, every second I'm gulping down oxygen. <gasps> Run into the bathroom. <gasps> First thing my brain did was like, you've got to eat like a large meat lover's pizza today. How funny would it be if after all, all the shit we've been through, if I uh, end up being diagnosed with a tapeworm and then they give me ivermectin? I don't even know. Like, I think I would just have to die. I don't think I could bring myself to take it at this point. Bro, I'm trying to eat dinner. Oh, that must be so hard for you. Now you put yourself in my shoes about uh, one one toenail has entered my shoe. You think I'm going to have sympathy for you? You can't enjoy your chicken tenders because of the conversation that I'm happening right now? This is, this is my damn life. Oh, you, you wanted to not die? Then why did you submit your stool sample on a Wednesday? Are you crazy? A Wednesday? After, after 11 a.m.? That means they're not even gonna touch the sample until Thursday afternoon. And then it's a long weekend, so everybody's gonna be taking the Friday off for Canada Day, which means we can't even possibly look at your stool sample until, I don't know, fucking August. I had simultaneous infections of both Salmonella and Campylo. Bacter. Combination Salmonella Campylobacter. Simultaneous Salmonella and Campylobacter. Simultaneous Salmonella and Campylobacter. Oh, you almost died? When? I've never had another like almost died situation. If antibiotics did not exist, I do think that this shit would have killed me. I guess I'll just die so I don't get C. diff. Uh, like, uh, and the fucked up thing is, based on the care that I received at the ER, you're probably a fucking doctor, okay? So I'm sorry that it hurts to hear criticism instead of just thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. I'm just giving you a patient user story. You can choose whether or not to take that information and adjust your behavior. Or you can just be like, well, I went to school for 27 years, so I don't have to listen to anybody but myself. When you get C. diff, you'll be sorry you didn't let yourself get killed by Salmonella and Campylobacter. Motherfuckers are like gatekeeping bacterial infections. This is the craziest shit I've ever heard in my entire life. You, are you listening to yourself? I almost died. Then I wanted some damn antibiotics. Everybody in the emergency room is like, why do you want the antibiotics so bad? It's just a little sus. You're, you're like so focused on the antibiotics. Oh, well, I think I have a bacterial infection. Oh, really? Well, why don't you just wait 11 days because it's Canada Day slash July 4th weekend and we'll see about that. So, you, you didn't have a bacterial infection, Mr. Confident. You had two bacterial infections at the same time. Why didn't you tell me how bad you felt? Dude, like you came in and you're like, oh, my stomach hurts and I have endless diarrhea and my legs get a little stanky. You didn't tell me you felt that bad. Then I would have given you some antibiotics, dude. I, I no joke. And uh, like, I'm, I'm not mining this for sympathy. I'm just telling you where I'm at. Someone in chat like a week ago was like, honestly, you may actually want to just talk to somebody about this because it sounds like you have like, you're having a trauma response. Like it sounds like you're a little bit traumatized <laughs> from the experience. I think you might be right. I think that with, with no, um, no malice, no sarcasm or cynicism. I think you might be, I think I might have been a little traumatized. Kate, I also think I figured out why I'm a little sick and you've escaped so far. Cause every, remember like on Friday when she was starting to get sick, she would always take like my water bottle off of the bike and then put it in my mouth and I'd be like, I'm drinking from the water bottle. And then she would put the spout in her mouth and try to drink from the water bottle. A, 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 alongside her sneezing into my face like 10 times. I'm pretty sure it's because she keeps force feeding me my water bottle after she drools all over it. But anyway, how are you guys doing? I'm good, well, thank you. Good, good, good. Well, let me, I, I am a little bit, I have a sore throat, but I have to tell you, I think I figured out the the cure for the common cold. Okay. I felt like my baby was a little sick Friday afternoon, and then, you know, she sneezed into my open mouth about eight times, so I mm -hmm. knew that I, it was coming for me eventually. Right. Sunday, I just ate, man. I ate. I had sushi. I had ice cream two times. Jesus. I had, uh, I had a donut. I had a bagel with cream cheese. I, I feasted. 
And then today, I woke up and I was only slightly more sick than I was yesterday. Oh, a couple more days like that, and it'll it'll probably be fine, right? I like, think I got just, it all just, figured just, out, man. Just eat your way yeah. out of it, out of it. It'll be fine. Um, I do. I need to tell you, by the way, most of the time when I'm sick, I'm getting right, and this is the better way for it to be. Okay, is is how I am right now. But most of the time that I'm sick, I sound like shit, but I feel fine. We're in the exact inverted situation right now. I am sick. I had a, a fever last night. I, I did the classic um, fever sleep, which is like, oh, I'm just going to go lay down for a second and watch uh, Netflix. And then I woke up at like 2 a.m. In a, in a pool of sweat in the bed. Having finished an entire uh, season of Keep Sweet and Pray or whatever the heck the show about the fundamentalist church of the latter day saints was so i am like my head is swimming right now did you eat your way out of it i will say so i last night i was like i'm not that hungry but i should eat to stay healthy so i ate like a bagel at 10 30 and then i woke up in the morning with the most ravenous hunger in my stomach so I'm very glad that I ate the bagel at the very least. But I, I'm like, I'm not feeling great, but I sound okay. That's And that's fine for streaming. Although I do have to say, pour one out because I did not use the Peloton this morning. It, it never even, uh, it never even entered the realm of possibility. But we're here. Um, no illness will stop me forever it might stop me for like two days it might even stop me for three days but it's not gonna stop me for the rest of my life ideally okay so you might be asking hey nl where have you been for the last couple of days well so here's my hypothesis okay i mean i'll just give you the the primary sources like straight from the horse's mouth my daughter got sick with some kind of respiratory illness last friday so she had sneezing she had a runny nose i got a I did, like isaac has been wiped from my brain is this item any good hold on maybe i'm amazing with it what an incredible item thank you so much for for being a believer um okay well uh, you know i thought maybe they'd go a little easy on me considering the the trials and tribulations i've been through recently but apparently not uh i started to catch symptoms of whatever that is on a, around sunday but that's very normal, especially when you have a, a toddler. Um, I was I had a little bit of a runny nose. I had some congestion. Uh, I wasn't playing the best Super Auto Pets of my life. You you saw that. That was all on Tuesday. Remember my last words on Tuesday. I don't think I'm going to be a hundred percent better tomorrow, but I promise you I'm going to be better. So that was a lie. So so step zero of this whole ordeal was I think I had an underlying respiratory illness, a, a mild. Uh, cold or virus of some sort then Tuesday the stream ends and something is just not right like something is is I just don't feel right is the the only way I know how to describe it like the stream ended and I felt uh I felt like melancholy I just felt like wistful and you know sometimes it happens you it, I'm not gonna say streaming is like stressful. It's just like, you know, you're, it's, it's high energy. You're talking to a lot of people. Sometimes you kind of like, you come down off of it at the end, but this was different. I was like, I'm sensible enough that I, like the logical part of my brain was like, this is a little bit weird. Um, and I took the baby out for a walk, which I normally do to begin with uh, after the stream is over when, when she's at home at least. And it was like walking through mud. It was like, <laughs> I, normally, I like maintain a pretty brisk pace, and I got no problems. Uh, you know, I'm playing Pokemon Go. I'm watching the baby. It's it's a great time, but it was like just not good. I was getting passed by, you know, little kids. I was getting passed by senior citizens. So I at that point, I was like, something is not right, for sure. 
Uh, and I, I was making that clear to Kate as well. I was like, I'm pretty sure I might be like sick sick. Because I normally, and, and I don't see like this is a sign of like superiority or anything like that, but I'm normally like a fast walker. Which is why I've enjoyed uh, walking with the stroller. Because, you know, when you're just a fast walker, people like they walk in groups of six people. They walk uh, side by side by side by side. They see you coming from a kilometer away and they refuse to get out of the way. They're like, why would we make space? That means you owned us. We're girl bossing right now. We just got uh, back from happy hour at Joey's. We've got six frozen mango Yarita Ritas in us. Anyway, when you have a stroller, that all goes out the window. They move out of the way for you, which is nice. Instead, with the stroller, I was like a... I was an inconvenience. People were like, I need to wait for this person to, like, stop so we can pass this old man. Oh, wait, he's not old. He's just, like, bad. <laughs> Dead moving, I guess. Uh, so I got home, and I was like, I don't think I can cook tonight. So we ordered something. Kay was like, what do you want to order? I was like, I don't care. And then, uh, we ordered ramen. I basically drank the broth and then just went to lay down on the couch. And that was the next four hours of my life. And that was not even, like, that was the best I would feel until roughly today. So Wednesday, Tuesday night, and this is where I apologize to you, and this is where uh, food poisoning became, like, a... a I, I think that I got food poisoning to go along with the flu-like symptoms. Um, Tuesday night, I went to bed, you know, at like 9.30 p.m. I woke up at around 8 a.m., but I woke up every hour on the hour to use the bathroom. You want to talk about like a rude awakening? A pood awakening? Sure. Do you want to call it a pood awakening? I've had norovirus before, and that was, I was like, this is probably something similar to that. Although, the, I've gone back and forth. Like, Kate's hypothesis, I actually think is, is correct. She thinks that I probably caught some kind of, like, uh, I don't want to call it a foodborne illness, but, like, some kind of pathogen from cleaning, like, the cat's litter box or something, because the cats also had diarrhea. And then I caught that in, like, the worst way that I've ever had in my entire life. But I don't think it's norovirus, which it, it, all the symptoms line up. But apparently norovirus is, like, really um, contagious. And both Kate and the baby do not have any symptoms at all, which is, like, amazing. I got, I got like, the, yeah, tomovirus, man. So, basically, my entire Wednesday was... Uh, just being in the bathroom. Wasn't in the bathroom 100% of the time, but like every 10 minutes or so, or every, maybe 10 minutes is an exaggeration, but like, you know, it'd be like an hour off and then like, you know, three times in a half hour and then like 45 minutes off and then go again. And then like that sucked pretty bad. And uh, not being able to eat anything at all. So just, you know, your body's just flushing absolutely everything. So not not feeling great to begin with. Then yesterday, I, I felt like I hit a breakthrough. I was able, I, I woke up normal time. I still got up like once every, you know, hour. Well, no, I'm probably like once every two and a half hours maybe to use the bathroom. But when I woke up, first thing my brain did was like, you've got to eat like a large meat lover's pizza today. And I took that as an incredible positive sign because the day before that uh i ate a piece of toasted whole wheat bread with nothing on it <laughs> and and it the other day and, and i again i don't know if anybody else has ever had uh i know you by the way people are gonna say covid covid i've tested negative and then you go hit, do the line bart the tests don't always work right okay so what do you do you just test uh every day for the rest of your life until it's positive and then say I knew it like at some point I got to put some faith in the in the companies that are making the tests right we can't just do this every time what the, what was the joke we had like three months ago is like I thought I had COVID and then the test came back negative and then I knew I had COVID anyway I, I'll, I'll test again tonight just to be sure but regardless 
I lit and I don't know. Maybe I have the diarrhea strain of COVID, but I have like no normal, typical COVID symptoms, except a little bit of like a runny nose. And then also, I will say my sense of smell and taste is all fucked up. It feels like it's being rewritten from like the ground up. Every time I open my fridge, I smell something just putrid. I don't even know how to describe it. I, I almost feel like my body is being terraformed. But you know what? I, I googled uh, symptoms of food poisoning and apparently loss of s a sense of taste is also a food poisoning symptom. I think your, your body basically goes like, we're going to figure out what the hell gave that to you and we're going to make sure that you never uh, eat it again. That's happening to me too. It's super weird. It, like, it's very strange. Like, I ate some uh, cheddar cheese this morning. Is the saltiest food I've ever eaten in my life. Has it always been that salty? That's also a COVID symptom. Bro, I took, I took the test. I took the test! What do you want from me? People are like, I'm not a doctor. But from the symptoms you're describing, I'm 100% confident you have COVID. I shoved the swab until it hit, like, my brain and circled it around for 20 seconds. Anyway, I'm doing a little bit better right now. Um, not like a hundred, I would say like I'm 35% of my normal strength, but that feels like incredible to me versus the, uh, the, where I was the last two days. Like bizarrely enough, being at 35% is like, I, I feel like superhuman right now. What food was the spawn of this horrible poisoning? Here's the thing. You might think that I'm like you. And after having said that, oh, people always feel like they have a superhuman ability to tell what their, uh, what gave them food poisoning, even though there's no way they could possibly know. They always just say, oh, whatever e ethnic restaurant I ate at, oh, whatever place had those vegetables in that sauce. Oh, uh, they never think that it could be like the chicken fingers that they didn't preheat the oven for and then they didn't adjust their cook time and then they ended up eating like half eaten or half cooked gray maple leaf prime chicken strips. I engage in pruning cognitive dissonance for my life. I don't know if I got food poisoning, what gave me food poisoning. My wife and I eat almost the same thing every single time. There's, there's a couple of things that I've eaten that she did not eat, but I, I am not going to put any, pardon me, any uh, like local businesses on blast just because I'm like, oh, it was definitely the bagels. Oh, dude, I knew something wasn't right with that bagel shop. And yet I bought a half dozen and ate two a day for three days anyway. I'm not going to be, you never know, man. I, ca I can't say it, it easily. Here's the thing. Even though Kate and I ate like the same stuff, it could even have been like from me cooking. And who knows, you know, I'm, I'm chomping up like a chicken thigh and when I'm washing my hands, a little water splashes off my hand, gets into my mouth and I'm like, mmm, chicken water. And I like drink that down and then I'm like, mmm, lick my fingers a little bit or something like that. Like, you never know, right? But that's also why I think, I mean, for me, and this is not medicine, but as like, or this is not a medical wisdom. But that's why like the cat poop hypothesis kind of makes sense to me. <clears throat> not only do I clean the litter box, uh, but so that that would explain why, you know, Kate and the baby haven't gotten any symptoms. But also both of the cats had like some gastrointestinal distress. So I'm, I'm thinking maybe I clean in the litter box, you know, Got some on my hand or something like that. Didn't wash as thoroughly as I should have washed and, and who knows. You know, life comes at you fast. But it was legitimately like... The, physically, the one of the two worst times I've ever felt. Like, I just did not feel right. <laughs> Is a good way to describe it. I was off. And then like, I, I also, I, I started thinking about how to like rework the the Canadian healthcare system, man. Cause like, you know what I needed? Kate was like, are you gonna go to like urgent care? Are you gonna go to the hospital? And I was like, honestly, I kind of feel like I, it's warranted, but I can't 
go to the maybe this sounds petty or not petty but like not I'm I'm not prioritizing thing, things properly. I'm like I can't go to the hospital because if I drive to the hospital, I'm going to crap my pants on the way to the hospital and then I'm probably going to crap my pants like 10 times in the waiting room. I need like a doctor that'll make a house call cuz I I like it just sounded like torture to be at the hospital and know that though and even I was like man if they even put me in like a hospital room which seems unlikely for me because obviously they got like bigger priorities like even then I'm just gonna be like I'm gonna be shitting my pants like not so shitting the bed I don't even know man I'm gonna but I could be sitting in the waiting room for like eight hours because they're gonna be like this guy's just got food poisoning like I did it was gonna be bad, man. I just, I, I felt like, I, I didn't really think I was at risk of like, serious health consequence. I, dehydration, I was just like, I mean, I, I, for the first night especially, I made sure every time I went to the bathroom, I drank like an entire glass of water every time I went. So like, I probably had like, I don't even know, like 20 glasses of water the first day just to try to keep some semblance of, of fluid balance, but I was also, I was getting so pissed off at myself. Like the last time I, I cleaned my fridge, we had this like Pedialyte that we bought the first time my daughter got sick and we were worried that she would get dehydrated. We had this applesauce that we bought when Kate was sick and she couldn't eat anything. We'd had them for like six months. They were still good. And I said, we're never gonna use this Pedialyte. We're never gonna use this damn applesauce. Get this out of here so that I can get more, uh, I can fit more cans of LaCroix in the fridge. And then wouldn't you know it, I would have killed for some damn Pedialyte. I would have, I would have killed for some damn applesauce, quite honestly. I ate a lot of bananas, I'll tell you that. Anyway, like I'm fine, but I was like, uh, I mean, I, I was wondering like, like what do you do when you have the, I guess you just suck it up and go to the hospital and then shit your pants. I guess that's the, I mean, I, I would rather die at home with some dignity, I guess, but I guess when push comes to shove, you gotta do what you gotta do. Pedialyte tastes like dookie, though. I don't know, as of yet, we're about, you know, 20 minutes into the stream. I feel like, I don't know if you understand the severity of what I'm describing here. I was not very concerned with the taste of the thing that I was consuming. If you are, um, like a little dehydrated, and you're like, oh, Pedialyte? Wait, do you- I need- I'm so dehydrated, do you have any Gatorade? Nah, we just have Pedialyte. Oh, uh, that's fine, I'll just, like, sit here and be thirsty. That was not the situation that I was in. I was in a situation that was like, I need to consume water, it preferably with, like, some electrolytes in it, or, like, I think I'm actually gonna have, like, some kind of medical episode. So anyway, that was that. And again, that's why I was I, I was laughing to myself whenever people were like, uh, we stay in a streamer who who's he engages in practices of self-care. I'm like, there's nothing self-care about this, my man. This is <laughs> It's like I'm like 85% dead, and people are like, if you don't want to stream today, that's okay. And I'm like, yeah, no kidding. I'm fighting for my damn life out here. Every, every second I'm gulping down oxygen. <gasps> Run into the bathroom. <gasps> I got triple ply toilet paper. I don't even want to know like what it looks like in that area downstairs right now. I don't want to know. I can't do the normal wipe anymore. I got to do like a like a dab and peel. But sometimes I don't know if I'm only getting mess or if I'm taking off part of the tissue as well at this point. Like it's a it's a disaster. It's clean. It, it might actually be too clean. That's the problem. This is too far, too far. Okay, like five seconds ago in chat, people were like, NL's the kind of guy to Google his symptoms and think he's dying. Now I'm describing what it's actually like and people are like, oh, gross. You need to like, honestly, grow up a little. This is the human body. That's why you use a bidet. Honestly, I think uh, bidet would have cut me open like a damn fire hose. It basically would have been like, Anal waterboarding. It would have sliced me up like a, like Darth Maul's lightsaber, man. What is he saying? I muted. No, nobody tell him, okay? 
You don't get to do, oh, this is gross, I'm muting. Somebody please type out a description of what he's saying. If you want the goods, you gotta suffer through it, okay? I don't think you understand. I'm like, I was not joking when Dan tweeted me and was like, the Peloton doesn't skip a day. And then I said, on Tuesday, I felt bad about skipping, but on Wednesday, I, or today, I'm just lucky to be alive. There was a slight exaggeration. I never thought I was going to die, but I did think there was maybe like a 25% chance I was going to have to go to the hospital and stay there for a bit. Hey, NL, you forgot to schedule YouTube videos today? Hey, Chatter, until about four hours ago, I couldn't sit in my computer chair. Like on, on Tuesday, uh, I felt... Tuesday night, I felt so bad, I couldn't sit in my computer chair because I felt so bad. Have you ever experienced anything like that? Yesterday, I couldn't sit in my computer chair because my butthole hurts so bad. On Tuesday, literally just like psychically, physically, spiritually, I felt so off. I was like, I can't sit down. I just have to lay down with my face into the pillow. <laughs> I have been hung over. This is not, and trust me, hey, Josh is here. Josh will vouch for this. I've had some hangovers in my life, without a doubt. You could describe this as like the symptoms were kind of similar to probably like the worst hangover I've ever had. Minus the headache, no headache at least, and less nausea, but stomach ache and the gastrointestinal stuff cranked up literally like 10x. So nothing like a hangover. Hold on, hold on. This is... That's a good one. You're gonna say that that's negativity. Here's the deal. This guy, I, I've, I, he wanted some attention. He got it, okay? Like, his last five messages were like, at Northern Lion, I think you're overreacting. I try to make an uh, analogy. He says, oh, so nothing like the thing you're trying to analogize to? I'll see you in the on-ban requests. Here's that attention you ordered. Happy Friday. Hope you're having a good day at work. You got what you wanted. I saw your message. What work? He's probably 13 years old. Did you guys lose a step while I was gone? That's the joke. That's the damn joke. I've been out. Are you, are you kidding me? I thought I lost the ability to make good content while I was gone because the only movie I was able to watch was the damn Matrix Revelations or Re Resurrections, whatever the hell it's called. Doesn't even make any damn sense. Waited for it to go uh, free to watch on Crave. Sat there, watched all two hours and 75 minutes of it. Don't even know what the hell happened up to this point. I still don't know what happened in the movie at all. I should have watched Morbius, dude. It would have been the perfect day for it. Especially because I took like literally like a morbillion poops. Anyway, I'm, I'm mostly just happy to be alive. Again, I don't think that I was going to die, but there was like a realistic chance that like I, I could have spent like a night in the hospital, I think. But I also, I don't know, I gotta be like the, the guy who's like most supportive of the medical industry while also like choosing to never use it. I'm basically like the dad from my big fat Greek wedding. I'm like, I have food poisoning, what are they gonna do? I gotta go there, I'm gonna wait in the room for eight hours, I'm gonna crap my pants, someone's gonna take a video, oh, the, the 101 streamer on Twitch shits his pants ten times in the hospital waiting room, lol, gets spread around, TMZ, everything like that. I go in a room with a doctor who's like eight years younger than me and is going to be like, well, we're just going to send you home so you can just make sure you drink some water. You can go to the pharmacy and buy some Pedialyte. I can't go to the pharmacy, doctor. If I go to the pharmacy, I'm going to shit my pants in the pharmacy as well. I need, I need someone that we need to take this back to like the 1920s. I need a doctor who like runs, a, he can do a house call or something like that. I can't leave the house. I can't be more than a five minute walk Preferably a five second walk, honestly, away from a toilet right now. But can I tell you, here's how you know I'm the ultimate wife guy. Even when I was waking up once a night to go to the uh, the bathroom, I was making the extra effort to go to the downstairs bathroom instead of the one that's adjacent to our master bathroom or master bedroom. Because I didn't want to wake my wife up with like the most horrible noises she's ever heard in her entire life and that was just to give you some perspective that was about the level of like 
bowel control I had. I could make it the 15 second walk from the bedroom downstairs to the other bathroom. And I wouldn't want to add like another 15 seconds on to that. Yeah, I would love to have just Ubered, like gotten like an Uber doctor or something like that. This one goes out to all the people who had food poisoning at some point in their life. Um, I do think this is the second time I had it. And honestly, the first time I had it was worse. Me, Mouth, and a mutual friend of ours, who also Josh knows, we, we ate at uh, Burger King, but only me and our mutual friend ate there. Mouth did not eat there. Later that night, we were at a party, and uh, our mutual friend spends like two hours throwing up in the bathroom. And we're like, whoa, dude, like what a lightweight. And then uh, like half an hour after that, I was like, hey guys, I gotta go home and uh, spend like the next four days throwing up and pooping everywhere. But got better. Thankfully, this time, no vomit. That's, that's a positive. It's definitely better to just be pooping than pooping and vomiting, but still really bad. Imagine how many people the Burger King made sick that day. Yeah, but I feel like it's honestly like um, it's on me for eating at Burger King. Like that's one where I'm like, well, what did I expect? Like food that's safe to eat? Food that wouldn't poison me for a week? I mean, if you want food that's not going to poison you for a week, don't eat at Burger King. I mean, that's just the gimme. It's okay to blame the victim as long as you're the victim. I'm, I'm on a seafood diet. I see food, I eat it. Dude, I'm on like a seafood diet. I see food, I don't really eat it. Although I gotta be honest yesterday, Subway, you do not have my permission to use what I'm about to say in any promotional materials. I will sue you. Your safety is not guaranteed, just like you sued the CBC. That, it was, yesterday was the first time I kind of knew that I was gonna be okay if I just gave it some time. And the signal that made me realize that I knew I was gonna be okay was when my body was like, eat a foot-long Subway sandwich. It was like the old lady from the quarry was whispering in my ear. She was like, you know, Subway. Silas? And I gotta be honest as well, I had never been, like I went to this Subway at like 11.03 a.m. I was so hungry, I hadn't eaten anything really in like two days. And I had the best sandwich artist of my entire life. I don't even know how to, like, I was so fucked up. I was, like, almost in tears. I was, I also got a sandwich for Kate. I was like, I don't know if I can handle this cognitively, ordering two different sandwiches at the same time. I'm, like, I'm more than 10 minutes away from home. The bathroom might have a code. I might be crapping my pants in here. She was actually, like, a, a sandwich, I don't even know what to say, like, a sandwich goddess. She walked me through every step of those. She was a sandwich saint. That's a perfect way to describe it. I just, I, I didn't order optimally. I stumbled out like a completely non-sequential uh, list of sandwiches. I was like, I want a foot long Italian white oven roasted chicken breast, sweet onion, chicken teriyaki, six inch Italian white. And she was like, you know what? This guy is fucked up. <laughs> but I, I can rearrange the order of what you said and figure out what you want. That's, that's maybe the best indicator. I don't even know if this is good. That's maybe the best indicator of uh, how messed up I was yesterday. I was so messed up at uh, Subway. I didn't feel mentally like I was well equipped enough to order two sandwiches with two different kinds of bread. I self-talked my way like, in the lineup for Subway, I was like, you know what, Slugger, I don't think you're a two kinds of bread guy today. I think you might just be, uh, you might just have to take the L on this one and get the same kind of bread on both sandwiches. I don't know if you can manage that many moving parts right now. Whew. I can't believe I'm alive, man. Like, I, the other thing is, I can't believe I haven't had to go to the bathroom over the course of the stream yet. I can't believe I streamed on Tuesday. If you had seen me on Wednesday, you would have been like, this motherfucker was live yesterday? On Wednesday, I don't know if I could have even booted up Super Auto Pets. Much less gotten two wins. You were a little out of your mind on Tuesday. Yeah, no, I knew something was wrong. 
I was not connected. Even today, I'm like, my brain is not working at like 100%. Symptoms of hepatitis A include diarrhea, nausea, dark colored urine, a yellowing of the eyeballs. Okay, look, <laughs> sorry, I don't mean to make light of this. Diarrhea, nausea, <laughs> yes. I didn't have my eyeballs. <laughs> Oh, man. Don't make me laugh, dude! I think my eyeballs are okay. Oh. <laughs> you know what thought also stuck with me? Is like two weeks ago I was randomly itchy, right? And I was trying to diagnose it with chat and then somebody said cytotoxic megacolon and I googled cytotoxic megacolon and it's like a damn nightmare, right? It's like a is horrible and then i was like how ironic would it be if i fucking died due to cytotoxic megacolon or something like that like a week after not making fun of it really but like poking fun at it and then also like a week after saying you guys have permission to make fun of me for dying in ironic ways it would be like the perfect storm i actually like kind of came to terms with it it was like, it, you know, it, it at least would be an interesting bit to go out on. Don't call it a cytotoxic megabyte. <laughs> Do you have a will? Uh, no, but like, I, and again, this is no joke, but Wednesday night, I was like, I should make one. Like, pretty soon, I think. Just in case. Not because I think this is gonna kill me, but just because, you know, just just going to the bathroom that much made me realize, like, you know, how fragile uh, the human body is. You should leave Caden the baby some money. Yeah, the thought crossed my mind. I was, <laughs> it was gonna be one of the things I would probably put in the will. <laughs> I've been thinking about it at least. What about chat? Well, as you know, I, um, taking profit is unethical, so... Whenever anybody subscribed to me over like the last 10 years, I put I wrote down a little slip of paper with their name and how many months they've been subscribed and I put it in a big ledger book. And then I popped it into VTI, Vanguard's total US stock market uh, index fund. And then I'm going to redistribute it all upon my demise. Not <laughs> Oh, everybody loves investing now. Normally when I talk about investing, everybody's like, oh, minus two, minus two, bad look, bad look. All of a sudden, you're getting the rewards and everybody's excited to talk about the legacy of Jack Bogle. Well, well, well. You don't even, un I know you're like, please stop talking about it. You don't understand that I don't do this just to gross you out. Do you know how good it feels to have gone four and a half hours without taking like a violent liquid shit. Holy cow. Even if your day is horrible right now, like on a emotional level, maybe you can look at yourself and find like some gratitude that you're hopefully not going through that. Dude, I gotta say, I was feeling a little malaise last night as well. Had a little tummy ache, was worried that maybe there was like an echo of the food poisoning. This is not a joke. I, I wish it was a joke. I For dinner, I was like, I don't really feel like cooking. I kind of feel like eating some pizza. I ordered uh, a large Hawaiian pizza. Ate literally like six slices. Woke up feeling like a million bucks. I had, I had like empty stomach, like my stomach was just like, fill me up more, fill me up even more. And I just kept eating and eating and eating. Then I went to bed, I woke up and, and put down a Peloton ride that was plus 70 kilojoules versus the ride that I put out yesterday. And I was, I think that pizza saved my life, quite frankly. This is the hard reset, dude. I, did, I, I like, I, I refilled the damn tank or something like that. 
Did you see this stuff on Twitter about a company's lentils giving people severe food poisoning? What the hell, man? That's all. I don't think that I, uh... I don't think that I consumed lentils in the week that I got the food poisoning. Like, really bad renal failure? What the hell is going on out there? Is this because we defunded the FDA to save uh, 75 cents on everybody's income tax? Is that a knock-on effect? Mozzarella cheese being recalled in British Columbia? What the... Dude, what's going on? Mozzarella recall, BC. Okanagan's choice shredded cheese is being recalled over listeria fears. Okay. I do not... I've never consumed Okanagan's Choice shredded cheese, so I think I'm like in the clear on that one. Also, I don't buy shredded mozzarella, I buy shredded Tex-Mex. But you got me thinking here, Listeria symptoms. Let's just see. Oh, it's the same as every uh, type of foodborne illness? Fever, nausea, cramps, diarrhea, vomiting, headache, constipation, muscle aches? Thanks so much. It couldn't make like a blue warning light appear on the back of your neck or something like that? Anyway, let's. I, I'm okay. It's just the, the pizza saved me. How can you have diarrhea and constipation? This is a very good point. Oh, I can't stop not pooping. Oh, I'm constantly not shitting. I guess it's just you... Actually, now that I think about it, it sounds like a disaster. Because it sounds like you feel like you have to poop at all times, but nothing comes out. Which is a, a classic tragedy. I believe it was in the Epic of Gilgamesh. Here I sit broken-hearted. Um, tried to poop, only farted. You look slimmer, have you lost weight? Thank you for noticing. Um, I started exercising regularly in about November and have maintained a, a rigorous Peloton streak since then. And then that progress was doubled over the course of the past week when I crapped my brains out 10 times a day with uh, food poisoning. I did have the, I had the first moment when I went to, uh, when I picked up my daughter from daycare yesterday, I looked in the elevator mirror on the way down to parking, and I was like, you look like shit. <laughs> I like, you, you, you need to eat something. Not like I got too skinny, but like I got decrepit over the past week. I needed to like, I needed that refeed last night. That saved me. What did the other parents say when you mentioned the food poisoning? They were trying to, like, stay with me, right? Like, they were like, Oh, yeah, I've had food poisoning before. Come on, man. I was like, uh, yeah? Well, I'm still presently suffering from some of his ill effects. How are you supposed to compete with that? I mean, I was, like, the king of the, of the daycare, for sure. There's no doubt. They, like, last week, I had the highest elo of suffering of anybody at the daycare. And it feels good, honestly. At least it, it wasn't all for nothing. I gotta tell you, I'm a little bit scared because um, I'm right next to me is a LaCroix can. I had some LaCroix uh, last night and it I drank all the water, but it's fizzing right now. Like it, it's, I don't know if you can still hear it, it's still active. Okay, I'm gonna tell you I'm dumb. That was actually the sound of my Venetian blinds hitting the window because the fan is now pointed in this direction. It turns out it was not the sound of a sparkling water can now that I, now that I had a chance to investigate it. Dude, I could go for a blooming onion right now. The crazy thing, so if you WebMD the symptoms that I've been having, I apologize for talking about this. Trust me, I would rather not be talking about this, but this is my life right now. Every disease that they try to diagnose you with on WebMD has the same symptom, loss of appetite. I have uh, the craziest appetite I've ever had in my entire life. I feel like I could eat an entire large pizza like three times a day, um, I, which is what makes me think that I honestly have like a, like a 25 foot long tapeworm inside of my body or something like that. I've started having like psychotic midnight snacks. Like last night before bed, I made toast. Then I put uh, shredded cheese on top of the toast and microwaved it for 20 seconds. It's like the worst grilled cheese I've ever had in my entire life. It was like a Kitchen Nightmares grilled cheese. It was one of the best things I've ever eaten, but only because of the circumstances. Did you see that guy sacrifice his own life just to get a wafer thin slice of attention? Did you start lifting again? No, I just have like a tapeworm, I think. 
Which is okay. If, if it's true, it could certainly be worse. In fact, I think of all the worms that you can have, like, as a human being, I think a tapeworm might be, like, amongst the best. I am thinking, like, how funny would it be if, after all, all the shit we've been through, if I uh, end up being diagnosed with a tapeworm, and then they give me ivermectin. I don't even know, like, I think I would just have to die. I don't think I could bring myself to take it at this point. But it, it would be a hilarious uh, prognosis for sure. I've been having the most fucked up dreams too. Like, I I dream, um, like last night, but, but pretty much every night, all I dream is that I'm looking after my daughter and I'm going like, where is she? I gotta keep an eye on her. I gotta keep an eye on her at like all times. And then I'm like, oh no, I haven't seen her for like 15 minutes. Uh, where is she? Is she lost? And then I wake up and I'm like, she's not lost. She's asleep. <laughs> and then I fall asleep and I have the same dream over and over. But even like in the dream, I know that I'm in bed. And I'm like, it's a, even if I'm in bed, I've got to keep an eye on her because who knows where she is. And then I'm like, my awake mind comes to the surface for like a minute and is like, you're fine. She's in her crib right now and you're sleeping. And I'm like, oh, okay. Where is she? It's crazy. Your tapeworm's trying to get you to be a good dad. Honestly, plus two for the tapeworm. I respect the parasite that also improves your fatherly abilities. What did you name your tapeworm? I mean, honestly, I feel like I gotta call my tapeworm, like, Domino or something like that. Because he's got me craving pizza like crazy. Anytime I get the choice... I mean, like, to be honest, so I went to the urgent care, right? They were like, mm, it's probably gonna be like an hour and a half till the doctor sees you. We'll send you a text. I went... And keep in mind, I have gastrointestinal issues. That's why I'm at the urgent care. Um, I went across the street and ate, like... A, a pizza that was just barely large enough for like one person to feel okay eating it. I would not describe it as a personal pizza. I would describe it as um, like probably two people would be better off splitting it. But I just man moded that shit. And I was like, that's it, it, honestly afterwards I was full, but I wasn't like disgusted with myself. I was like, I needed that. You see, there you go. Maybe we'll call it Little Caesar. Like, my appetite is insane right now. There were two of you eating it, though. You and Little Caesar? I guess that's true. I guess that's true. You know you know what? True, true. That's pretty true. Yeah, that's pretty true. Is it true that to remove a tapeworm, they just hold food outside of your butt and wait for the worm to poke his head out? I do not think that that's true. That can't possibly be the, the way that you treat a tapeworm. There's no way that it is. It actually is. Come on, man. There's no way. And then they yank it out. I'm a doctor is true. You guys are actually, you're totally lying to me. You tell, they don't just give you like a, a dewormer, like a veterinary dewormer or something like that. No, they do not put a mouse trap on your ass. Come on. This is not a joke. This is my life, okay? If it's actually a worm, can you take a photo of it on Twitter? Well, sure, if they do the thing where they play the clarinet right next to my butthole until it gets charmed and it comes out, then I would I would take a photo of it for sure. But if it's a tapeworm, I'm pretty sure they're just going to give me some pills. And then, like, I'm going to crap it out amongst all the other detritus that I've been excising from my body lately. Dude, yeah, don't, don't they just use that gun from The Matrix? Where they see the tapeworm like crawling around in your stomach and then they isolate it with that weird claw gun. Everyone knows on Fall Mountain you go right side. It's just the fastest path. It's simple science. The sweet science. Boxing. I'd say acceptable path so far. I'm not worried about low grav. I'm not worried about low grav in the slightest. I love that for me. That seemed amazing. Can I make it on the first cycle? I don't think so. I'm insane. I'm I'm the best to ever play Fall Guys. That was so easy. <laughs>
He's back, baby! Thank you, little Caesar! High five! Have you seen the 16x size Taco Bell Cheez It? Hold on. 16x size Taco Bell Cheez It Tostada? That might kill your tapeworm. I've never eaten at Taco Bell, as I say, once every like two months, but um, I might make an exception for a 16x Cheez It Taco Bell Tostada. Tapeworms in the chat. Dude, maybe it is other tape. Other people out there are probably infected with a tapeworm. And the tapeworm is like getting them to type stuff that would make me eat something that would make my tapeworm grow. I, I probably just lost right there. Like, you don't even realize why you're typing it, but you're like, you know, eat a whole stick of butter. Hey, you know what would really help you is if you ate like a whole stick of butter right now. I would say I'm, fe I'm feeling about the same today would be my uh, my assessment of myself but i did manage to get to the clinic yesterday drop off um you know the samples that have been clogging up my fridge drop off uh well i i gave a little bit of blood which is nice and hopefully uh hopefully soon we'll know what kind of terrible infection has befallen my uh my gut and uh i'll be placed on some medicine that will hopefully help me out that's my that's my hope I mean, we've reached the level, like, of copium, where people write stuff, like, I was in Dan's chat, and somebody wrote, Hey NL, don't stress too much, I worked in a pork processing plant and got infected with something once. I was sick for six months, and then finally I got put on three courses of antibiotics and got cured. And that, to me, is a happy ending. <laughs> now, I, I read that story now, it's not even like a cautionary tale. That story for me now is actually like, hey, at least everything worked out alright in the end. Hopefully, uh, it, it won't take six months though. I gotta say as well, I went on a little bit of a Twitter blocking spree. I think this was like, I don't know, three or four days ago. I tweeted like, sorry guys, I have to go to like the after hours clinic today, um, or the urgent care clinic today. I'm like not feeling well, my dysentery is returned. Somebody tweeted me and said, ha, sick. Okay, get blocked. It felt amazing. I, I, I'm normally like just a serial muter. I went straight for the damn block this time. I, I can't imagine where you gotta be, uh, in your life when a stranger is like, basically like, I'm at the hospital because I don't feel well. And then you reply, ha, you're sick. What are you doing? Get a life, get a clue. I'm already getting annoyed enough. I'm like, oh, I have like a gastrointestinal, like bacterial infection or a parasite or something like that. And then, I don't know if I can make this one. People are typing ignorant shit in chat. They're, they're typing in chat like, uh, hey, that happened to me for 12 hours once, and I ate some rice, and I was okay. Okay, I fucking tried that. I tried that one. I tried the rice. Who would have thought the rice didn't uh, do the trick? It didn't kill the, the salmonella that's raging inside of my gut right now. What's next? Oh, have you, have you considered drinking lukewarm water with a squeezed lemon and some cayenne pepper in it? I think this is what it requires, genuine medicine. Dysentery with rice, 2 out of 10. Don't say sexy stubble NL is back. I'm in disarray right now. You see how pale I am? I haven't been this lean since I was like 16 years old. It's, it's <laughs> disconcerting. <laughs> part of it is the Peloton, but part of it is also the, the, the gastroenteritis, man. NL, are you going to Saudi Arabia for the Fortnite tournament? I have no idea what you're asking of me. <laughs> Did I miss something? Is this what it, this is what happens when you go to bed at like 9.45 p.m.? I didn't get a chance to catch up on, on all the day's news so I could talk about it the next day. It's drama bait. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm probably not gonna go to Saudi Arabia for a Fortnite tournament. I'm very, I'm very sick right now. I have a daughter. I got lots of uh, excuses. You know, it's a, it's a wide industry. I don't concern myself too much with what other people do for the most part. I'm just out here trying. Honestly, I got bigger problems today trying not to like die. If they want to fly little Caesar out, that'd be fine. Maybe they could get little Caesar to, they could lure him out of my, you know what? And then, I mean, honestly, I feel like my, uh, I feel like my tapeworm could probably finish like top 20. You're really craving pizza if you want pizza pizza. I'll be honest with you. 
Pizza Pizza is like the worst chain pizza in Canada. I'm craving pizza badly enough that just when you said Pizza Pizza, my body was like, yeah, that would hit the spot right now. Oh man, hope you're feeling better. Thank you. Honestly, like, I, I feel fine. Uh, I mean, I feel okay. I definitely don't feel fine. It's just, you know that uh, meme image that's like, why do we have to keep, or how long, how many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? That's like me and getting rest. Like, I know that I need to rest. And yet, like every day, except for last night, but every other day, I go like, well, I'll just rest tomorrow or something like that. And then I like just do more than I should do instead, even though I'm like a zombie as I'm doing it. I think it was smart last night. Last night, I went, uh, I went to bed at 9.45 before I even was able to like make all my YouTube thumbnails for the stream content that happened yesterday. And then I said, you know what? From two to five, when I normally make YouTube videos, instead, I'll make the thumbnails during that time. And yes, it'll mean that overall, I get a little bit less work done. But it will also mean that I get to rest, which hopefully will speed up my recovery eventually anyway. Along with some medicine, hopefully. <laughs> I'm, I, I mean, it, it sounds like a, like it's a self-serving thing to say. Maybe it is, but I, I've never been good about, about resting when I actually need some rest. Little Caesar takes no days off. He stays hungry, that's for sure. He devours. Have you gotten back on the Peloton? That's insulting. Um, I was only off the Peloton like today. But the rides have been like, they've been up and down, man. Like some days I'm like almost back at my uh, like pre stomach incident output. But then some days I just hit like a wall of sludge halfway through and I'm like, ah, geez. I, I'm getting, uh, I'm like riding with the 70 year olds five points below the resistance call out some days they don't come easy it's true some days they don't come hard some nights uh, they just don't come at all and these are the days that never end Did you take the crap out of your fridge? Yes. Honestly, and this is completely sincere. Going through this has made me realize that like a lot of people, if they ever experience the issue that I am experiencing right now, will simply choose to die. Even in Dan's chat, he was like someone in my, someone came to my chat yesterday and was like, um, I had to leave NL's chat because he was talking about keeping poop in his fridge and he started laughing and he was like, I guess I shouldn't laugh. What if it's a medical issue? I was like, of course it's a medical issue. Why, why would it not be a medical issue? Like, why wouldn't, why would that not be the first thing that you would think of? And like, honest, I've had, and I'm mostly being satirically angry here just because I know some people, you know, they, they are not good at tracking that stuff, myself included, maybe. But, um, People, I've dealt with the most insane takes regarding stool samples. The, the, the worst one absolutely has to be the, the hundreds of people who told me to just ignore the instructions on the sample, which just seems insane to me. People were like, I know it said like poop on a piece of saran wrap and then like scrape it into the cup or whatever, but I would simply poop into the cup. Okay, like I'm not going to do I'm going to do what the scientists told me to do because they like know more than me. This is my first stool sample and I'm going to you think I'm going to reinvent like the whole system myself or something like that on the first I'm not going to these lab tests might be sensitive, man. I don't want to mess with their methodology. So I I honestly think like a lot of people if if they got this issue, they would simply accept that they're going to die rather than they would be like, "Ooh, it's gross to keep poop in the fridge." So I'm just gonna not provide a stool sample and simply pass away instead. I don't know why, I, I, I feel a little bit defensive that I've had to defend myself so much for like, like people were like, ooh, that's gross, there's poop in the fridge. And I'm like, yeah, it's gross. But I also like, don't wanna die. <laughs> like I have to provide a stool sample. So I don't know what you want from me. 
If there was a less gross way to do it, and they told me to do it that way, I wouldn't be like, nah, I'm just gonna poop in the in the cup and put it in the fridge instead. But my wife had C. diff, and she had to get a stool sample from her dad implanted in her butt. First off, this is just a very funny sentence. Secondly, I am now at a point, I honestly don't care. I would get it done in a heartbeat. I would get, a, if, if the doctor told me a fecal transplant would help, I would get it done in a heartbeat. Modern medicine is amazing. I, I literally don't care how gross it is if it works. Who cares? What if you had to eat a little bit of it? I mean, if, if the doctor, hey, this is true. If the doctor said you have to eat the poop in order for this to work, I would probably get a second opinion because that doesn't sound medically sound. But if the second doctor said, I know that sounds crazy, but the first doctor was right, I would be like, okay, I'll eat a little bit of the poop. I guess it's just the difference between like having something to live for and <laughs> not. He said, I'm not going out like a, like a damn fool, okay? I'm not going out just because I'm embarrassed. I'm going to make this shit kill me. You think if you told me if I ate some poop, it would make my stomach feel better? If the doctor said it and they had literature to back it up, I'm eating the damn poop. I'm, I'm not going gentle into that good night. I already put poop in the fridge, you know? It's just a, another half step beyond where I've already been. They want to give me a rectal exam. They want to give me a colonoscopy. They want to give me a, a sigmoidoscopy, by all means, dude. Can we do it all at once? I'm a busy man. The loathsome dung eater. <laughs> Bro, I'm trying to eat dinner. Oh, that must be so hard for you. You losing your appetite a little bit? Now you put yourself in my shoes about uh, one, one toenail has entered my shoe. You think I'm going to have sympathy for you? Can't enjoy your chicken tenders because of the conversation that I'm happening right now? This is, this is my damn life. Didn't you say you have a, a huge appetite right now? Well, it varies based on how recently I ate. I don't know if that's just me or if that's true for like a lot of people. OMG, me too. Would you rather eat poop or have surgery with an 80% success rate? Is So is the poop is 100% success rate? And I'm not... Are, are we... Is this how we're constructing the bit here? The poop has no... Like, I'm not going to get an infection from eating the poop. We've somehow sanitized the poop and it has a 100% success rate, then yes, I would eat the poop in a heartbeat. Rather than get surgery that's 80% successful? Are you crazy? Go under general anesthesia? Or I could just eat something that tastes really bad? I would eat something that tastes disgusting, for sure. How do you know it tastes disgusting? Well, okay, I guess I'm just, I'm just going on a hunch that it tastes disgusting, because it smells disgusting. But maybe it's one of those things that smells disgusting but tastes good, like fish sauce. I still think, like, I don't know. Are we in, like, the silk shoes going down the staircase stage of, of our empire? Because people are asking me, like, you know, well, why would you keep your poop in the fridge? It's because my gut is all messed up, man. I got to give a stool sample to the laboratory, but I can't just produce a stool sample on command. So when I, you know... When the sun's up, I gotta make hay, and then I gotta put the hay in the damn fridge. This is perfect. I'm not just doing it out of, you know, for sport. This is, this is like a serious issue. Just make sure you don't eat it accidentally. Trust me. You would. They don't put ice cream uh, in a plastic cup that has a, a a label on it with your first and last name and uh, your symptoms. If you would eat something out of a plastic jar that says severe diarrhea then I, I mean, honestly, you got bigger problems than keeping your, your poop in the fridge. Um, I've been asked to ask you, Ryan, how your tape works. I, What'd you call it? Well, I think we're getting to the point where it's like no longer humorous. Um, okay. So last week I suggested that I had a tapeworm. It hasn't really abated in the time since. And uh, I think my, I'm, I'm waiting for some lab results today, but my hunch is that I don't actually have a tapeworm. I have like a relatively severe bacterial infection that I'm eagerly awaiting a prescription for antibiotics to clear up. Fuck. So I got my, I got my phone ringer on high, hoping that those, um, that that information comes through as soon as possible. Well, I hope so. That sounds pretty rough. Yeah, that's scary. Yeah, I went to the ER on um, on Saturday morning, and they, I mean, they gave me a bag of fluid, which I, I've never been as euphoric as when that uh, the fluid actually hit my body. 
That was kind of amazing. And they gave me a little bit of medicine through the IV. And then the doctor came in after like three hours and was like, so what are your symptoms? And then he felt around in my belly a little bit. And then he came back um, in 15 minutes and was like, well, I'm not really sure what's going on, but I think we need someone smarter than me to treat this. So uh, he gave me a referral to an internist. And I was like, that sounds great. And then when he came back, the appointment is for July the 13th. And I'm like, well, that's, that's yeah, I'm a not, long wait. I'm not sure I'm going to be in rush hour three by then, man. <laughs> are, they, are they like giving you any like, like things to do or like while you're waiting or like things to like, not, I don't know. Like, the the I, doctor at urgent care at least um, told me to have some emodium, which was good, I think. And, and that's kind of like, that's allowed me to live my life a little bit. But other than that, I mean, I, I really, I feel like I'm in a shitty like five out of 10 TV movie called like the 33 year old man who can't get doctors to take him seriously. It's like the first time in my life that I wish I was old. No, and you don't. I don't know though, man, because like when I was in the ER, people were coming through like they were like 70 and they had a like a cough and they were like, we're going to send you right to the VIP section, miss. Uh, sorry for the wait. Meanwhile, I'm just sitting right. there like, on, you know, sitting like Gen Z style with my legs all cocked to the side on the hospital bed for like three hours waiting for somebody to come in and say hello is anybody uh anybody else in the call is slowly having their body colonized by staphylococcus bacteria uh, like right maybe now? i'm in the very early I stages and it hasn't hit me yet so yeah, like i can't say no because i don't know i got all manner of shit going on in my body like i it could i could well have what you've got i'm sorry i lifted a house you would yesterday. be surprised i would be surprised if you had what i had you sound like my doctor right now i, I get every time i go to like the er i end up getting insulted and complimented at the same time they go well you look pretty good and i'm like thanks i feel like fucking dog shit so i guess maybe like next time i'll get someone to put some makeup on me before i come in so you take me more seriously shouldn't you feel like cat crap i get it <laughs> sorry <laughs> wait is that how you think this whole thing started i still don't know that because i'm waiting for my dog god forbid you get uh infected with something around a long weekend in canada I submitted my stool sample on Wednesday, still waiting for my results on uh, Monday. How do you do that? Is it like in a dish or a bag Dude, or something? you don't like want to know. <laughs> so um, I swear to you, the instructions say... It's like a piece of tin foil. No, well, kind of. They say, so you open the lid of your toilet and then right. put two layers of saran wrap on the toilet um, and then close the lid and then go on top of the saran wrap and then just use like the spoon that they give you to scoop the stool from the saran wrap into the into so the So what, is it like a full log or just like a little tiny bit of poop? Well, I'm not producing full <laughs> logs right now. Right. Um, so it's like a little spray. Yeah, you full know. Full log to name Ryan's sex tape? <laughs> not lately. <laughs> <laughs> Wood, wood through after the full log has been through the wood chipper, maybe. I'd love Why? if they just gave you like a, a novelty size funnel and like a big jar. That, dude, that would have been more helpful. By the way, I'm relishing this shit because when, like, when we're talking about anything else, people are like, hey, how's little Caesar? Man, man, how's little Caesar? Man, man, man. Then I actually describe like the symptoms that come along with the thing that everybody's making jokes about, and they're like, I'm eating. Disgusting. <laughs> they only want the fantasy of the illness, they don't want the reality. <laughs> come on. God, I'm true, trying to eat shit true. out of saran wrap here. <laughs> so like I, I put two layers of saran wrap on the toilet and then um, I had to go like really bad, right? So I went on top right. of the saran wrap, but the stool was so heavy that it like, I, I mean, it basically like tore a hole through the plastic wrap and then it all fell into the toilet. So you couldn't get a sample from that? Right, so then I had to rewrap it. Like I did it like quadruple ply and then it held up to the the mass of the of the sample. <laughs> did it make like a did it make it the sound of like stretching leather while <laughs> when the poop was on like, <laughs> 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 see like little little threads of saran wrap like snapping and hit me in the legs <laughs> ow sounds like like wires <laughs> sounds like wires <laughs> oh man oh, god Lord. i can't that's that sounds horrendous yeah it's, it's been like horrible I, you know, like they say stool sample, I, people, I feel like people just take it for granted. They're like, oh yeah, I'll just supply a stool sample. But like the logistics of doing that, I've never really considered it before, but like. I wouldn't be so bad if I didn't have like 
horrible diarrhea. It's like if, if you, it's like when they, when you have to give a urine sample. They're like, oh, okay, well, we're gonna need a urine sample, and you're like, yeah, okay, and they give you this tiny tube, and you're like, what the fuck am I supposed to do with this? Like tiny tube. I, I whiz like a racehorse. Like, I'm gonna need, like, a vat here. Like, there's no way I can just pee into this, like, little tiny tube that you've given what me. Do you get, what are you getting a tiny tube? They give me, like, a whole cup. Yeah, I don't know. Like, last time I had one, they were like, they just gave me this little tiny tube. That was for a sperm sample. Oh, God. Oh, he I filled wish. that up real quick. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ. I blew the roof off the hospital mm -hmm. that time. <laughs> what the hell? No, I mean, it's, you know... Funny thing is when they asked for his sperm sample and they gave him some magazines, he's like, no, where's the Sears catalog? Hey. Hey. A vintage wank. <laughs> hey, one of my good childhood friends' mom was a Sears catalog mom. Yo, let's go. Oh, man. Showing, am I right? I did. I was second guessing whether I was going to tell this story, but after I had been in the ER for a few hours, I, I had to go to the bathroom. So I, uh, I walked myself over to the bathroom. I, you know, peed, washed my hands, all that good stuff. I walked out and there was like a 70 year old lady there. And she said, oh, hello, are you done with the bathroom? And I said, yes, I am. And then she said, okay. And she walked in and I swear, not like two seconds later, I just heard, <laughs> Like a hundred times in a row. It was the polite pooping. It was the <laughs> politest person that I had ever seen that was mere seconds away from vomiting. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh. Oh, what would you thought of her if she came out after that and she just had like chunks on like the side of her face? I would have been like, You're in the right place, lady. Sorry, sorry, dear. I just I couldn't I could help myself. But what if what if she you came out? Yes. What if she came out and she said, "Do not go in there." <laughs> you don't want to go in there for like 35, 45 minutes. Hey, NL, there haven't been any new NLisms recently. I've been busy like not like trying not to die. I know I mentioned this in the Discord a few times. I was laughing. Um, you know, my wife tweeted some nice stuff. She tweeted like. Um, Hey, my husband's lost a lot of weight and he's still dealing with his illness. I, all I want is for him to feel better. And some people in the Discord were like, oh man, this must be like worse than we thought it was. Maybe we should stop making jokes about this endlessly. And then somebody went deep into the Twitter records and was like, no, look at this tweet he made at the same time. Um, and it was the Pokemon Go official account tweeted like that, whatever the pheromone Pokemon showed up at Pokemon Go Berlin. And I said, um, damn, what's her at? And they said, he's okay. You know how little effort it takes to, to post damn, spelled wrong, what's her at? I'm struggling, man. You should not take that as an as a indicator that I'm doing okay. Quite the opposite. <laughs> I don't know. You seem fine. Honestly, that's like, um, this is a main frustration every time I talk to a doctor. I never thought that it, like, honestly, the hardest that the world ever gets is when you're a 33-year-old man. And I, I, I hate to say it, but it, my experience right now is uniquely uh, biased towards thinking that that's the, the, the reality that we live in. Every time I go to the ER or the urgent care, I'm like, please, like, I've been, uh, I've had 22 straight days of diarrhea, and they go, oh, man. That must be really hard. Well, you look okay, so I'm gonna give you an appointment for uh, an internal medicine specialist. Uh, the, the earliest appointment we have is uh, two and a half weeks out. So, you know, uh, just go home and get some rest. Make sure you drink lots of clear fluids. And I'm like, ah. She makes me wish that I'm old, man. If I was 70 years old, I walked into the hospital and was like, I coughed this morning. They'd be like, Play they'd roll out the red carpet. No, no joke, I was in the hospital for four hours on Saturday. Somebody got seated, like we were in a partitioned room. They got seated in the partition right beside me. As soon as they sat down, nurse was like, can I get you a sandwich? And then um, he said, yeah, what kinds do you have? And then she said, we have roast beef and we have salmon. And he said, I'll take a salmon sandwich. I've been sitting there for four hours. Nobody offered me a damn sandwich. They did give me a bag of saline solution through a, an IV into my arm, which was nice. That helped out, but like, oh, can I have a sandwich, please? <laughs>
I would also love a sandwich, don't get me wrong. When fluid goes off, it makes you feel like a god. I'm not going to mess with you. When that first fluid bag was about halfway done, I felt kind of euphoric. Oh no, she fell down. Everybody's been there, and I don't mean on vacation. He sold the chinchilla. <laughs> that was like watching a car crash. I mean, like, I'm, I'm actually... I, I've tried to impress this upon people many times, much like my doctor. They don't appear to uh, take my comments about his severity at face value for whatever reason. I'm playing Super Auto Pest, but really, I'm just kind of like at work right now. My main priority is... is keeping my metabolic processes functioning and hoping to get a course of antibiotics today. So I actually think it's, it's made me more resistant from the back seating because normally my number one priority is playing Super Auto Pets as best as possible. But what's happening right now is that like I have bigger priorities in life and then people are like, hey, you kind of misplayed that round. And I'm like, oh no. Well, anyway, people talk, people talk, people talk. You guys are going to be so fucking haunted. I'm, I'm honestly kind of looking forward to it. I'm going to haunt your ass for like 70 years. And I'm looking forward to it. I'm at the point of like, um, like Ralphie from A Christmas Story where he gets his mouth washed out with soap. And he's like, I actually hope I die so that I, I, or I go blind so I can make my mom feel guilty about giving me soap poisoning. Antibiotics can mess up your bowel and then you need a poop transplant. This is not a joke. Man, they should never prescribe antibiotics then. That sounds really bad. Oh, wait, it saves people from life-saving bacterial infections tens of thousands of times daily? Oh, well, okay, in that case, shut up. <laughs> he said the word wrong. He said the word wrong. Oh, my God, so annoying. Overuse of antibiotics is actually a huge issue. Right now, my biggest issue is, I would say, the underuse of antibiotics. It's actually easier to get like a weapon than it is to get antibiotics. I understand on like a societal level that for fucking 40 years, people could just go to the hospital and go like, hey, I have a sore throat. And they'd be like, here's a bunch of antibiotics for you. We're not even going to run any tests. Just, just run like seven courses of amoxicillin. They've ruined it for everybody. I'm out here fighting for my damn life. I can't get antibiotics. It would be easier to buy like a fucking ninja star. The death of the microbiome is so melancholy. So long, my love. Imagine if they invented a pro-antibiotic. <laughs> Imagine. Nothing could stop us then. If you could eat some Danan yogurt that implanted bacteria in your gut and then immediately killed it. Hold on, I've received a message on my telephone. It's, it's, that, was, that was just my weather app telling me it's cloudy outside. Thank you. I really appreciate it. <laughs> That's why I have to have my ringer on in case my doctor calls. I keep getting these like Samsung notifications that are like, just so you know, it's cloudy outside. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Burp, 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 burp. But to fit into like one archetype, hold on, I gotta take this one second. All right, I'm back. They, they moved up my appointment with the internal medicine specialist. Let's go. Step seven of 35,000 to getting a diagnosis. Yeah, I feel like a doctor's appointment. Sorry, can I, I, can I cut, cut? <clears throat> Three, two, one. You know, I feel like a doctor's appointment is the only appointment where it always ends up being shorter than you want it to be. Every other appointment, you know, you got to renew your car insurance. You're like, just wait in the car. I'll be out in 15 minutes. Doctor's appointment, you know, your appointment's at 9. You show up at 8.55. You're sitting in the lobby until 9.20. They say, right this way, sir. They take your height and weight and then make fun of you a little bit. Then they go, you can go into this room. You're waiting in the room till 9.45. The doctor comes in and says, so why are you wasting my time? And you're like, mm, I have a little bit of a sore throat. And they're like, mm, go home. Go, go home and get some rest. It's like a two minute long uh, appointment. Everything else, if you gotta, God, God help you if you have to like, um, you know, renew your debit card in person at the bank. It'll take you like two hours. You'll sign a thousand forms. 
Um, at the doctor, it, it takes an hour just to see them, even if you have an appointment, and then they give you uh, four minutes with which they will regale you with their expertise. So that's, I'm going to see the doctor soon. If you're watching on YouTube, what about spa sessions? I've never done a spa session, but I feel like it lasts exactly as long as you book for. Is that not the case? Best of luck today. Thank you, thank you. I don't even know, like the, the bits are almost getting too dark. In British Columbia, you actually, it's probably true with other provinces as well. I don't know like how the medical system works where you live, but we have access to like an app that gives us our own health records. So I can look at my own health records. I've been checking to see like if my blood test and stool sample results from last week have come back. Finally today, my blood test came back and I'm not qualified to interpret them, but I got it. They got to get a UX designer on this immediately because the first thing I saw when I opened up my my blood test results was um, it was like test HIV result in range and then a, a big green check mark and I was like um excuse like I just started like involuntarily shaking then I thought about it for like two seconds and I was like okay that's right in range with a green check mark means that the test results are normal um and then i checked the ones that were out of range and had a big red x and uh those ones were like hey, this one tests for signs of infection this one tests for um a uh, bacterial presence and i was like okay so just take the ones that look like they're um that look like they're uh present and then reverse them so so yeah, I don't fully know how to interpret my blood test results, but you know, that's kind of more for the doctor today anyway. When do you expect to return from the doctor? I honestly hope that this is the longer, longest doctor's appointment I've ever had in my entire life. People assume that I'm making light of the situation when I say this, I promise you I'm not. I hope that they say, holy shit, how has nobody taken you seriously so far? We're immediately gonna place you in a hospital bed for 48 hours. I don't think that's gonna happen. But that is kind of like my, if, if I could design my perfect interaction with my doctor today, it would be something like that. We're immediately going to give you intravenous um, antibiotics and place you under uh, uh, observation for the foreseeable future. That would be nice for me. Now, what I expect, and I'm not just, what a, what a win. I'm not just saying this to be cynical. What I expect is maybe we'll have like a half hour long appointment and because I've had some tests come back, they, they might actually have now the ability to give me some medicine that is specific to the problems that I've been experiencing. But I, I really don't want like a 10 minute long appointment. That would upset me. I hope they can give you some good stuff like IV morphine. I really don't need, like, I, I don't think they need to give me, like, a fentanyl lollipop or something like that, even though it would be a nice consolation prize after paying taxes for 14 years and uh, not having any doctors take me seriously, despite the, I don't know, three times I've been to urgent care in the ER this week. I would settle for some medicine, quite frankly. Just some medicine would be okay. Morphine makes you constipated, at least. Well, that's what, honestly, I've been taking Imodium. I didn't know Imodium was technically an opiate. When I was talking to the doctor about it, he's like, yeah, Pepto-Bismol just kind of like coats your stomach in something that is therapeutic. Uh, Imodium is actually, it works on the same mechanism as opiates. So it, it just basically creates like chemical constipation. You need IB Morbin. They still sell that? I thought ever since uh, the movie came out, they put it behind the, the safety glass. Send some gift subs your way, hopefully for good luck at the doctors. Thank you, I appreciate it. You didn't have to do that, but I do appreciate it, thank you. If they try to kick me out without any medicine, I'll say, excuse me, Eklo gave me some gifted subscriptions today to give me the self-confidence to fight for myself. Hey, Lil Caesar official, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Appreciate it. Appreciate parts of it, at least. Is one of the... One of the interesting parts about being a public figure is having, um, I don't know, spent the last week especially stressing uh, that this is actually like a very serious health concern. And then having people that, who have not uh, seen you be like, ah, you look pretty good. 
So I'm just going to treat this as like uh, satirical and like it's a joke and, and I'm going to interweave it into parts of the canon. Like the thread on the subreddit that was like, uh, God, I wish the NLSS was still around So for this little Caesar arc. That would be great. Thank you for wishing that like seven of my friends would just constantly bring up the same misrepresented food poisoning take from 2015 over and over as I slowly have my whole body colonized by staphylococcus bacteria and pray that I don't slip into sepsis overnight when I'm unconscious and unable to get to the hospital fast enough to be treated before it proves lethal. It would be, that would be really, that would make for some serious golden age content. I really appreciate it. Anyway, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Wow, that's very specific. Yeah, I wonder why. I wonder why it's very specific. I am very smart. <laughs> How'd you come up with that one? I don't know. Blood tests. I literally spit take that the sepsis joke. What's the joke? As I know it's like the second time I've said it. The same thing when I was talking about how like I have a serious uh, stomach infection. I'm worried that it's C. diff. People like come out of the woodwork. C. diff's very serious. I wouldn't joke about it. Who's joking, bitch? <laughs> I Google the damn symptoms. I'm, I'm familiar with the, with the ramifications of C. diff. I think it's possible that it exists in, in my stomach right now. <laughs> you don't have C. diff? I had it and I was not okay. Thanks, doctor. I appreciate your feedback. The medical school of Twitch. Have you ever considered that maybe I'm just built different? And also, it's easier for me to be at work when I have it because I have literally the easiest job of all time. C. diff will put you in the hospital? Yes. Yes, it's correct. That's my goal. Ideally, I, I, I couldn't agree more. When will the food poisoning arc end? No offense, but the pacing's kind of ass. You, good sir, win the internet today. I've been subject to a lot of jokes over this, the course of the last three weeks. Most of them bad wordplay about shit or ass um, or references to Northern Lion Live Super Shows from seven years ago. But you, sir, win the internet today. Take my upvote and leave. I was thinking about that today. I don't want to get into too much information, but uh, I would say today I, f I took like the first mammalian shit that I've taken in like three day uh, three weeks. It felt amazing. It felt like I was... I'd returned to Earth and I had a terrestrial poop, like the kind that, I would not say it was a good one, but I would say it was like, if you saw it on the side of a country road, you would be like an animal made that. For the last three weeks, I've been having just Ridley Scott alien outer space bowel movements, just stomach popping and gurgling and then like half bent over rushing to the bathroom clinging both sides of the bowl going like get it out of me but this one this one was like a it was like a livestock poop like i felt like i was an animal again not like i had been infected with some kind of alien from a malevolent android whose uh motivations are not completely known like do we know that he's, like, is he just doing secret bidding for the Wayland yutani Corporation? Or has he himself reached the point where he's a genuine artificial intelligence and he's just doing stuff for shits and giggles that he finds interesting? I don't think we'll ever know, to be honest. I don't know if we'll ever know. I'm hoping that I can progress maybe, like, within the next few days, I could progress to, like, a human poop as well. That would be very nice. If by, like, Thursday, Friday, if, if I could have a, a poop that I would describe as, as a hominid poop, I would be like, okay, thank God Dan saved me. Okay, I know, like, it's all... It, it's harder to have, like, an inside joke when it's your health. This is no joke, like, the first time... At least, I don't know, probably when I was a kid, probably modern medicine saved my life a couple of times. I don't, I don't remember, but I had a lot of ear infections and stuff like that. Who knows what would have happened if modern medicine didn't exist. But at least, like, this is the first time since I've been an adult that I was like, if modern medicine didn't exist, I would probably be dead. Probably not like um, within like two days, but, but within two weeks, I think I probably would have been like in the ground. So I was very thankful for, um, for the existence of this hospital. What happened? Are you new here? <laughs>
Glad you didn't die. The, okay, so this is probably melodramatic. I was like, at, at the very least, when the doctor gave me the antibiotics, I was like, I might die, but at least this shit's not gonna kill me. Like, that that's the small victory that we've been, uh, that I've been reveling in for the past 24 hours, or, or at the 16 hours, something like that. I'm like, something might kill my ass, but at least it's not gonna be this insulin bacteria. Yeah, I would rather, if possible, I'd rather not die due to, like, diarrhea poisoning, for sure. <laughs> that would be, that would be ideal. Anyway. We, uh, sorry I, I was unable to, um, return to the stream yesterday. I went to, uh, the, I went to my doctor's appointment that was at the hospital, as I'm running the casino right now, and I thought, um, that I would be, you know, 30 minutes, because that had been kind of like the, the typical doctor's appointments that I've had so far, and, um, I, I figured I would be back, you know, within an hour at most, and then, um, I started describing my symptoms to the doctor, and she was like, oh, we're gonna, like, um, admit you to the hospital um, this afternoon, because this sounds, like, really serious, and we want to make sure we get this checked out as soon as possible, and I swear to God, like, I don't know, I cried, like, three times yesterday. That was the first time to, to, to hear after, you know, a week and a bit of trying to impress upon doctors that, like, I know I look like, um, Superman right now. I've been putting in a lot of good work on the Peloton. Um, but, like, I feel, like, complete garbage right now. And, like, here's the visual evidence of it. <laughs> to have this, like, 60-year-old Polish lady be like, Oh, yeah, we're gonna, like, admit you to the hospital immediately. This looks, like, pretty bad. I was like, you're, you are my guardian angel. You, uh, you might save my life. By the way, what kind of psychopath do you have to be to bet on doubt in this situation? One of, one of history's great villains? You hear what I'm saying on this run, and then you're like, I'm betting that you're gonna lose this one? Like, it, that's just... It's just ignorant. It's just, that, that's personally and morally insulting. That's, I don't know what to say about you. The odds, though? <laughs> I don't want to rag on, on the staff, okay? But I, I don't think that I got first pick of the, um... When I was giving my blood test, I don't think I got first pick of, like, the phlebotomist. Or, or the nurse that was doing, like, the bloodletting. Because first off, like, she, she printed off, like, all the stickers for my blood test order. And there were just, like... I, I knew they were running a lot of tests, but she had, like, I don't even know, like, 40 stickers. I, I was like, there's no way they're taking 40 vials of blood out of me. This just It seems like she set something up wrong in the system, or, like, double printed them or something like that. Anyway, so, and she was, she had so many stickers, she was getting confused. She's like, I don't really know, like, we're gonna have to poke you, like, three times. And I'm like, that's fine. And then she's like, and then, so she was talking about how they were going to have to poke me a few times, and then she came out with two cups, and she was like, so I'm going to need you to poop in this cup, and we're going to give you, like, some tongs, and you can use the tongs to scoop up the poop and put it in this one, and then in this one, um, you, you're going to poop, but you could use different tongs for this one, and I was like, I thought I was just getting my blood taken, like, no, nobody's really telling me where we're going at this one, and then you start coming out with two cups, anyway, so they, I, we, we, we handled the cup situation, don't worry about that. Then, um, she, she poked me in one arm. I don't have a problem with needles or anything. Um, she, she poked me in one arm. Oh my god, I'm so stupid. Took my blood and I was like, that's fine. And then, um, she's like, okay, we have to take a little more blood, so we're gonna take it from the other arm this time, because it's like a different apparatus that they were using, I guess. So she tourniqueted my left arm and then found a vein and she was like tapping on it. And then she inserted uh, the needle, and no blood came out. So she started, like, you know, rotating the needle inside of my arm. Uh, and still no blood came out. And she said, oh, sorry, sir. That's not a vein. That's a tendon! And I said, oh, that's okay. No big deal. I mean, at this, at this point, I was still, like, you know... 
I just wanted to, I want to get every test that they could possibly run on me. Um, so, uh, I, I wasn't actually that put out. I mean, I, I'm being sincere when I say I don't get, like, grossed out by, uh, by needles or, or, or the, the blood aspect of it or anything. So it was most, I was just like, this is going to be a great anecdote. And then after that, I had some blood taken. I had a CT scan for the first time in my entire life. Which I always thought, like, a CT scan was, like, very, um... I thought the standards for a, T, a CT scan were, like, very rigid. Like, I, I thought you weren't allowed to have, like, any metal on your person at all. And then they just tell me, like, that's an MRI. Well, like, what? I don't, I don't know, man. I was just getting, like, freaked out. Because they were like, is your belt metal? And I was like, there's some metal on it. And they were like... It'll probably be fine. It's just things you don't want to hear before you get into, like, uh, a machine that's, like, the size of uh, a, an entire room. And then I said, wait a minute, I have my phone in my pocket, is that okay? And then they said, okay, well, you know what, we're just gonna pull your pants down to your ankles, and as long as your phone's in your pocket, it'll probably be fine. I just, I, they were getting a whole lot of mileage out of the out of the word probably that did not serve to make me very comfortable as a patient and then i just sort of like waited around for a while and then my doctor called me and was like hey we got back some of the blood tests and uh i think you're right you, there definitely appear to be signs of infection so i'm going to give you some antibiotics and uh that was like the second time i cried because it it felt like um it, i mean it was like it just felt like being heard by a medical professional for the first time in this whole ordeal. I mean, I understand why doctors can't just, um, like, take you on face value when you come in. And I'm like, I have a... You know, I don't, I don't go in and describe what I think I have. I go in and I describe my symptoms and, and try to lead the doctor to the conclusion that I've already gotten from WebMD, the way God intended. But we, we finally came to a shared understanding, and, th and that felt pretty good. Yeah, we don't know precisely what it is yet, um, and again, this is, I don't want to put the whole system on trial. The stool sample that I submitted on June 29th is still awaiting results. So, you know, I'm not suggesting that the people at the laboratory are lazy, and that's, like, I, I don't think there's, like, they're, they're having a bunch of, like, pizza parties or, or something like that while my cups are just sitting there in their refrigerator or whatever, but, like, I was kind of hoping that, you know, within a week they would get the results back or whatever, but I guess they got a lot of other stuff going on, which is fine. Through this, do I mean I, I'm actually a little scared for my family doctor, because I've gained a little bit of strength back even after only like two doses of the antibiotics, right? Like I, I'm starting to feel like the little ember of my personality that was still a light inside of me is starting to grow again. Like Mike during the fire making competition on Survivor 42, I'm starting to feel it. It's picking up some some twigs and some. Some loose driftwood and stuff like this, some floatsome and jetsome. And I, I really, I, and I've said this, I apologize for the, I mean, if Bear's still here, I already went off on a rant on this in the Discord. I, I feel like I need to have a, a conversation with my family doctor and say, so like, like, without being too rude, like, what are you for? And I mean it, I, again, I'm asking in good faith, but like, when I call you to, because I'm sick, your, your front office tells me that I can't have an appointment for four to six weeks because you're fully booked up. Okay, well, first off, that fucking sucks. I'm not saying you should be working like 26 hours a day, seven days a week, but that certainly seems like you can't really be like, you know, the, the standard of care that you would expect from a physician is very difficult to have there. If I can't see you for four to six weeks, like, like what do I then come and see you about? Only things that are like largely symptomless, but could lead to, you know, serious complications in the long term. I've been to the emergency room slash urgent care slash admitted to the actual hospital three times in the past eight days. As a result of that, she was like, hey, we can fit you in for a telemedicine appointment at 9 a.m. on Thursday. And I was like, do you have anything earlier? And then they said, no, if you can't make that, it'll be another four to six weeks. And I was like, okay, fine, I'll take 9 a.m. Thursday. But like, if, if the only reason I was even able to get an appointment yesterday was because I was on like a cancellation list. Somebody canceled and I was like, yes, I will 100% like fuck up my whole day to, to take their uh, appointment. If I hadn't had that, I don't know, man. Like I, I 
I don't know if I was going to be in rush hour three. I would le at the very least, I was going to have to go back to the ER and be like, you know, hey, hello, um, I think I'm dying. <laughs> I think I have, like immediately need some antibiotics and I know you're not going to believe me. But as of right now, with and I'm, I'm it's I like my doctor. It's not really like my doctor um, that I'm mad at. But like, I, I do want to talk to her and be like, so what are you like? What is the proper use case for like a family doctor right now? Like, I'm happy that we have a place for our daughter to get her routine vaccinations and stuff like that. But apart from that, I feel like you're just there so my wife can get pamphlets on like grief counseling after I die from sepsis after being medically neglected. I, I otherwise don't really understand what role you're serving in this in this system right now. Final, dude, that's the third time I've said that exact joke about the grief counseling pamphlets and the sepsis. I tried it in a group chat. I got no response. Maybe people thought it was too macabre. I tried it in um, the Discord. I got no response. Maybe people thought it was too macabre. Or maybe they were like, oh, he's so pretentious. He knows what sepsis is. Finally, it, it found its audience. I knew, I had confidence that this joke had some legs even though it's not really a, a joke. <laughs> That's, I mean, I, I felt like I was, like, again, without being too rude, I was like, this can't be the way that they, like, design the system. I, like, call my doctor's office. Hey, I'm urgently awaiting the results of some uh, stool samples to see what kind of bacteria I have so I can get life-saving antibiotics. I was wondering if the results have come in. Oh, uh, I'm just the uh, administrator. I legally can't talk about your results over the phone. Okay, cool. Um, can I talk to my doctor then? Oh no, she's booked up for like four to six weeks. All right, well, I guess I'll fucking, where should they send the death certificate then? Like, I don't understand. I'm glad to have my privacy uh, respected. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, I also need to receive the results of this test or I'm, I'm you're not gonna be in rush hour three, man. Can't you just waive those rights? Yeah, but I guess like unless we're on FaceTime, how do they even know I'm me, right? Like, I'll be like, yeah, I waive those rights. I might, I might be the damn hacker. Yeah, I have. The, it's actually pretty modern. I have an app now um, from the British Columbian government that allows me to see um, all of my like medical records, so I can actually see like the results for. Uh, for my tests, but the the tests, I, well, I mean, like, if, if you want to get into the true farce of things, okay, like, I signed up for the app on, like, Saturday to see if I could get the results, and then in order to actually verify my identity, you have to record, like, a little video where you look into the camera, and then you say your full name and your birth date, and then you smile, and then you repeat like a phrase that they give you, right? So I did all that, and then they were like, um, okay, we'll have someone review your uh, application as soon as possible. Please note, if you did it on the weekend, it could take up to two business days after that. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll just fucking die. All right, I get, look, I get, I'm not trying to say you should make people work on the weekends, but I am like, I had to jump through like 70 hoops just to get this damn stool sample result back. No one will talk to me for any reason. And now it's going to be another 48 hours before I can even see the results to begin with because somebody's got to verify that I'm really me. And then I swear to you that this is not a joke, okay? Once I got my identity approved so I could see my results on the app, it was like, hey, because you just got approved, it can take up to 48 hours to get all of your medical records like indexed into the app. And I was like, all right, I guess I'm just the only person in British Columbian history who's ever like gotten acutely sick. I guess everybody else just gets sick like really slowly and predictably. And they're like, oh, my tummy hurts. I'm going to sign up for like all this shit right now so that in six weeks when I really need the results, I can finally get them. Me, like an idiot, I was like, oh, I'm sick and I think I'm gonna get better, but tomorrow I'm actually worse. So like, I think I'm gonna sign up for this stuff. Oh, it's a Saturday, Um, you, you, you go go fuck yourself. Oh, you, you wanted to not die? Then why did you submit your stool sample on a Wednesday? Are you crazy, a Wednesday? After after 11 a.m., that means they're not even going to touch the sample until Thursday afternoon. And then it's a long weekend, so everybody's going to be taking the Friday off for Canada Day, which means we can't even possibly look at your stool sample until, I don't know, fucking August. It's just, I mean, I, I'm justifiably, I think, like a little upset. Oh,
And honestly, like, America, don't think that you're, like, getting out of this unscathed, okay? Because Americans are like, and no offense, Bear Taffy, I'm, I don't, I'm not calling you an American when I say this, but in times of prosperity, America thought they had a monopoly on prosperity. They would le legit, like, um, in, like, 1998, like, American people would say stuff to you like, Hey, do you guys have, like, electricity in Canada? We'd be like, yeah, we got electricity up here. <laughs> I know. We're pretty much, like, almost the same country. Um, but now that, like, shit sucks, they also think they have a monopoly on misery. And it's kind of equally annoying, quite frankly, because you can never complain about anything without someone in the United States being like, well, at least it didn't cost you like $10,000. Well, that's true. At least it didn't cost me $10,000. But I did for a while think I was going to fucking pass away. So the money was like, don't get me wrong. It's nice that it was free. But the money was also like kind of a secondary aspect in my head where I was like, mm, at least it didn't cost me $10,000. Uh, I don't know. I guess I'll have that extra money to spend on fucking corn dogs in heaven or something like you, you know things can sort of you can have bad experiences like everywhere also like it's not about i'm just like so annoyed it's not about you like i'm a dude that you like watching streams of i'm sick in canada and people are like well thank god you don't live where i live and i'm like okay who asked <laughs> I, did anybody mention that at all except you no like i don't understand why why, why are you bringing it up so anyway, like, that's that. And I don't know, you know, you got, I do appreciate, I got a lot of people, um, holy cow, um, that were just, I mean, like, I think, in my opinion, they give sympathy the right way, which was like, hey, hope you get well soon. And then I got a lot of messages that I, like, did not know how to interpret. For example, here's a message that's not nice to read when you're in the hospital, although I can understand why you might think it's nice to have written it, Hey, this man's videos have been a part of my life for eight years. I don't know what I would do if something happened to him. Well, um, I appreciate that comment. I would be fucking dead, but I'm sure, like, it would be really hard for you to find, like, another Twitch streamer to watch. <laughs> I'd be like, I'm gonna endeavor not to die for, like, my own personal reasons. But also, I'm like, if, if I could stay alive so that you don't have to change like the YouTuber you're watching, that would be cool too. At this point, if you die, we can just start watching videos from 2010. I think you've missed the point is that like I, when you're in the hospital and people are talking about the fact that like you might die, filtering it entirely through the selfish lens of like, oh no, I won't get fresh content makes you sound like kind of a... I don't even know. I don't know what I don't want to use a word that I would regret using because it because of its severity. Maybe have some sympathy for the fact that like the I would be dying <laughs> or <laughs> or you know my family would be left without a, a husband and a father or something like that. That would probably be where it would start. Or the the other comment that uh that showed up a lot where I was just like I don't know, rolling my eyes was like Hey, Anel, get well soon. I had food poisoning uh, in 2017, kept me in bed for three days, so I know what it's like. And I'm like, you don't, what, what is this, like, what existence do you have where, like, somebody gets, like, really sick, and you're like, you know what, this is a great opportunity for me to reciprocate with a story where I was not really that sick at all. I don't understand. That happened to my buddy Eric. Well, it happened to my buddy Eric, too. I'm just like... Oh, I'm stupid. Hold on. That was not a... We should have taken the tears up for sure. I mean, like, I for there was a, some moments for sure when I was reading the comments where I was like, this is like a damn living wake. And I was like pissed off. Like, I am not reading these comments and I'm like, oh, I feel like appreciated. I'm reading these comments and I'm like, well, now I'm definitely not going to fucking die because like 25% of people are insanely insufferable about it. 
I'm like not gonna die out of spite. At least I'm gonna do my damnedest. I couldn't believe, dude. I was, I was like losing my mind at the comments that were like, "I've been watching this guy for so long. If he died, I don't know what I would do with myself." I'm like, I don't know what I would do with myself either, shithead. I'd be fucking dead, you idiot. Like, I get it. You, you, you know, you're, you're filtering it through your own lens of like how it would impact your life. That's fairly natural. But like, don't say it on the subreddit of a man who's still alive having a damn CT scan at the hospital. Oh, man. It would be really hard for me to uh, not have new Isaac videos if he died. I, don't, I hope he stays alive for that reason. Thanks for the... Thanks for the empathy. I really appreciate it. Did you lose any weight through the whole ordeal? Well, that's... Dude, also, people were saying some fucked up stuff in the thread. There was like a week ago, I uh, I made a comment that was like... I, I looked at myself in the mirror on the way down to the parking garage, and I was like, Buddy, you do not look good right now. And, it, and then, like, so many people in the comments were like, Lol, you look like completely normal. Hey, Carl, thank you for the gifted subscriptions as well. Thank you. And then, like, in the, in the thread, people were like, he's lost a ton of weight recently. He's... And then the replies were like, holy shit, he looks like a fucking ghost. I was like, you, nobody was putting that shit in the... In Twitch chat. In Twitch chat, everyone was like, lol, you look normal. On Reddit, people were like, he literally... He's so pale, he blends in with his damn wall. And I'm like, well, that's normal for me. It's also funny because, like... I, I have lost weight. Like, I over this ordeal, I've lost, like, 10 pounds. 10 pounds is not insignificant, but, like, people were like, he he's, like, wafer thin. It's actually scary. Then I, I mean, I got weighed at the hospital yesterday. I'm 5'10", like, 178. Like, I'm still kind of a unit, to be honest with you. Like, I'm, I'm not... Uh, I'm not in danger of, like, immediately wasting away. I mean, I'm 6'8", um, 199.9. Oh, yeah, sorry, the, um, whatever bacterial infection I have also took, um, 10 inches off of my height, uh, which is the truly tragic part. I was like, I've lost a little weight, but, doctor, what I'm most concerned about is that I've lost 10 inches of height in the last, um, in the last couple of weeks. And she was like, oh no, what do you do for work? And I was like, oh, professional basketball center. And she was like, oh no. Half of the threads on the subreddit are like, hey, you know, as per Kate's tweets, NL's just been admitted to the hospital, get well soon. And then like some of the replies are like, damn, little Caesar really got to him. Rip, by the way, just kidding, get well soon, lull. I'm like, okay, when's your Netflix special come out? That's an insult because I think in the current state of Netflix, they probably would give a, someone who's not funny um, a special at this point. Somebody, somebody said like, I'm out of the loop. What did he get diagnosed with? And then there, the, co the top comment was like rapid onset hair loss. And then like immediately below that, it spawned like a base level conversation on the role of comedy in society. Hey guys, stop with the down votes. Just because somebody's being humorous doesn't mean they can't also be sympathetic to what NL's going through. And you're just like, I'm, I'm, in the damn hospital right now. Can you just fucking chill out for like a day? Can you just chill out for two seconds? Like, why are you guys attracting so much attention? This is supposed to be my day. And you you can't stop but, uh, but attracting the attention. But then like also on the subreddit, like in between those threads, there'd be a thread that's like, hey, did he say when he's gonna play the Cuphead DLC? And I'm like, I, maybe I fucking wanna die, man. Oh, you're in the hospital. That excuse again. Okay, why don't you just say you're not gonna play the Cuphead DLC and then, you know, <laughs> just say no and then I'll stop asking. Just kidding. Did they cure the baldness? Really good one. It's a hilarious joke. It's probably like the funniest joke I've ever heard. And get this, it's also the first time. And I would say, in spite of it being the first time, it's the most appropriate time I could possibly imagine hearing it as well. What, what humor school did you go to, to to land such unbelievable punchlines at such impeccable times? I got another one for you. This one, you can use it for free in your Netflix special. Why is six afraid of seven? Because seven, eight, nine. 
That one's on the house. You could put that, um, I would say that's probably like a minute 20 sort of bit once you finish your 20 minutes of uh, politically ambiguously riffing on vaccines and vaccine mandates and saying stuff like, you know, I joke though, it's been a crazy couple of years, am I right? I mean like this COVID stuff and the vaccines, dude, and like the, and the one-way arrows in the Albertsons aisles, what? I mean, I'm not saying like one way or the other, like where I stand on it, but like, you remember they had those stickers on the ground where you would have to like stand in line and be like, what? I do, I, so no joke, I was, I have a friend who, um, his wife is scientifically so accomplished that I cannot describe what she does. Not for like um, top secret clearance reasons, but just literally for ignorance. Like I don't understand. Um, she works, she has a PhD in some kind of like molecular biology, right? She works in some way, she's involved with developing fecal transplant therapy which is the thing that everybody makes fun of, but also is kind of like an incredible invention of modern medicine, where like if someone's gut biome is uh, really messed up, they basically shove someone else's poop up your butt, um, and then you inherit some of their bacteria in order to, you know, get like a little sourdough starter going in your colon, which is really cool, like insanely gross also, but like really cool. So I, I was talking to my friend about like, you know, my ordeal and he was like, oh, tell me what antibiotics you got. I'll run it by my wife. And then I, I told him and he was like, okay, so those are like the second strongest antibiotics you can get for this, which is good because uh, if these antibiotics lead to your gut being colonized by C. diff, if you don't have it already, at least they left one bullet in the chamber so that they can kill the C. diff. And I was like, okay. I mean, I get, that's a good thing to hear, I guess, is that there is still some, some room to grow. What'd you get? I don't even know how to... I, I, I can never remember the name. It's like Cyclopro...Zaphanin. <laughs> Cyclo... Someone in chat is gonna know. There, we got lots of pharmacists in chat, as we've talked about before. Cyprofloxacin! Thank you, yeah, Cyprofloxacin. I am very happy that I avoided ivermectin. I talked a lot of smack about the ivermectin crowd. I was so sure that I was gonna have to like become one of them. Oh man, thank the Lord. Tell your doctor immediately if you get joint pain on Cypro. I, I know man, I already told you, I can't tell my doctor anything. What I should have done is called uh, my doctor six weeks ago and said, I'm thinking about getting a prescription for Cyprofloxacine and I'm making an appointment now in case I get joint pain, in which case I will need your attention urgently. Careful while you cycle, Cypro can be known to cause ruptured Achilles tendons. All right, that's one of the most nightmarish side effects I've ever heard in my entire life. But the good news is that I'm still fucked up enough that I am not biking at all, um, for the, for at least for right now. So that shouldn't be like too much of a concern. Probably won't go out for any long walks or anything like that. No, I think it's true. I read the, the supporting material. The, the supporting material was like, Hey, this can cause life altering tendinitis. So if your tendons start to hurt, like, please, uh, See, uh, cessate using the medication immediately and then talk to your doctor. I have heard that Cyprofloxacin has been known to cause the stanky leg. Hold on. Because people are saying, do you have a, a, a bacterial diagnosis yet? I, I don't yet, but in theory, like, it's possible that any second now, um, the results of my first sample will come out. Let me go check my, my government-approved uh, iPhone app. I've also, like... When I first logged into my health records, it was like, um, I had like 10 tests in my entire life. And then I've, I've added like seven pages to my records. Oh, microbiology lab results, order status pending, June 29th. That should only take a second. I, again, I'm, I'm not a doctor, okay? But like, I, I was a little annoyed when I was at urgent care a week ago. And the guy was like, well, let's order some stool samples. But the way it usually goes is that it takes like a week to get the results. And then by the time you get the results, um, you're over whatever gave you the problem in the first place. And I'm like, that doesn't seem like something's fucked up about the system to you. 
It's like by the time the results of the test come back, you're either like naturally healed or you're dead. Like that just seems... I mean, it's still pretty good. That seems a little backwards to me, but it has the culture. Okay, that's actually fair. I'm not very smart. <laughs> I, it, they do have to take it and, and culture bacteria on it, I guess. That's fair enough. They, they can't speed that up? Can't you just add more agar to the plate or something? Can't you just sprinkle like some some Cheeto dust on the agar to speed it up? Can't you just put a little bit of like my... I mean, uh, let me tell you, I don't know if you need to culture it because it's growing pretty well in my gut in... in 2 pH hydrochloric acid, it seems to be growing pretty well, so if you can't culture that shit on a plate full of damn sugar, I, you gotta go back to biology school, man! Can't you just throw some G fuel on it? Can't you just put some, uh, some Gatorade powder on it or something like that, see what pops up? So bacteria only grows from 8.30 to 4.30, Monday to Friday, and not on the stat holidays? It was really stupid of me to get sick around the Canada Day combined July 4th weekend. Like, I don't know what I was thinking, man. That was, I mean, I did see a, a retweet. I'm, and by the way, again, I'm not really ragging on the doctors. I'm, I'm annoyed with the system that I, I mean, I feel like the doctors largely are doing the, the they're doing the stats based thing, right? Some 33 year old guy comes in and is like, my tummy hurts. They're like, well, you know, odds are, we, I've looked at 10,000 cases like this, 9,000. 995 of them was like, you know, he drank too much uh, White Claw and he just needed like a week to sort of sort himself out. So I understand like where they're coming from, but... So it's a little annoying as well, sure, yeah, also a little annoying. I'm eating, FYI. That's cool, you know. You have control over that and, and you could turn off the stream, you could stop eating. Either one is fine, really. It's all about you! It's always about you. Uh, could you please st stop talking about your health concerns? My Uber Eats driver just arrived. Just letting you know. Ha ha. I don't care. Live your life. You gotta, you gotta make the decisions that are right for you, okay? It's like you just got a three-piece chicken tender from White Spot, right? Or Triple O's. You're at the Canucks game. Some dude gets his neck sliced open by a skate. Um, refs, I'm eating. Can we clean up all that blood on the ice? I'm trying to eat my chicken tenders and fries from Triple O's. This man had the audacity to have a medical incident on the ice that I find not conducive to maintaining my appetite. Although, to be honest, I at an arena, I was, it's kind of more understandable. Not just because the food's expensive, but because, I don't know, like, the seats are so damn small. It's so annoying that, like, I have to eat in your seat when you can't even stretch your elbows out a little bit because you'll be like butting into the people on both sides of you. It's so annoying. And then don't even get me started on like, okay, until the end of the period, you like leave your, uh, like your food garbage under your seat. But then somebody wants to get up and get like six beers over the course of the period. So every time you stand up, you got to stand up and try to, there's no point in flipping. Stand up and try to not accidentally step on your chicken tendy tray and tip over the dipping sauce all over your shoes. You got a, a half empty soda cup there. You, and you're also trying to like, do I like, le do I stand up and lean as far backwards as possible? You know, what do I do in order to, I mean, here's what I'm going to say, honestly. I think they gotta make stadium seating a little bigger, man. At least at the Canucks Stadium, I'm surprised. Like, I'm a pretty average size guy, I would say, and I'm uncomfortable in the seats. Can't you just make this, the, the seats like 20% bigger, and then the aisles like 10% wider, and then the building 30% bigger? I guess it's it all comes down to money, but like... 6'8 is average? I told you I lost 10 inches of height thanks to my near-death experience. I don't want to talk about it. I will say, can I, can I give you like a social anxiety moment? I'm in a hospital. They tell me to drink lots of fluids. So I go to the vending machine. I buy myself a can of apple juice, okay? But then I say, there's no place in this hospital where I can drink a can of apple juice. Because I got to take my mask off. So as soon as I take my mask off, 
someone's going to be like, hey, put that mask back on. You're in a damn hospital. And I got to be like, sorry, sorry. So I just went to the bathroom and then took off my mask and chugged the can of apple juice in the bathroom. And then <laughs> threw it, threw it in, the, in the garbage and then put my mask back on and left. I didn't know what else to do, man. It's a perfect crime. I didn't know like, what, I, what I could do. What, what else are you supposed to do in that situation? Just drink it next to the vending machine? With my mask off? Are you crazy? They're gonna send me to the damn chokey. Go outside? Yeah, but then when you go back inside, you've got to go through like an interrogation to get back in. It's like some 75-year-old lady is like, do you have an appointment today? I've already been through it like 10 times. And I'm like, well, I had an appointment today, but then I also was admitted to the hospital. I pre pull mask down, sip, put it back up. I'm not a sipper. I'm, I, I, I mean, I chugged that can of apple juice in like less than eight seconds for sure. Enough talk. It's time to chug. It's time to chug. No. It's sipping time. Should have just drank it through the mask. Another, another awkward moment. The doctor said, I have to take a look at your throat. I said, do you need me to pull my mask down? I know, like, the answer is obviously yes. But for a second, I was like, maybe their flashlight is strong enough that um, it could, like, illuminate through my mask. I know how it sounds, but like I'm, I have some like trauma associated with the, sure, why not? Associated with like taking my mask off because when Kate was in the hospital having our baby, like the nurse was being like real anal. She was like, sir, I see that you have a mask on. I just want you to know that I've seen you touch it with your bare hands. After you've touched it with your bare hands, effectively that means that your mask is as dirty as your hands. So I'm gonna need you to reply. And I was like, oh my God, I'm sorry. Like, she was like, sir, you're in a hospital. I absolutely need you to take this more seriously. And I'm like, damn, girl, I'm just trying to have a baby out here. I'm sorry. But that, okay, you're right. That was 2020. Like, it was, it, it was a slightly different era in terms of how we were dealing with things, for sure. Where did that nurse go to school? I don't know. Later, there was, it did come out that there was a fake nurse in the Vancouver hospital system who had just been pretending to be a nurse for, like, 10 years. And I was just, I saw her photo and I was like, I don't think that that's her, but it could have just been like, a, like she could have done something with her hair. She was a fake teacher at my school. It was like a big news story. It was like 30 people uh, brought charges against her. They're like, yeah, I was about to die in the hospital. And then it turns out my nurse wasn't even a nurse. She was just like a lady. Wouldn't she be like a real nurse if she faked it for 10 years? It turns out in the eyes of the law, the answer is no. They're, they're apparently pretty serious about the, about the qualifications that you need to have in order to be like a real nurse. I mean, you got to do what you got to do. I, I'm a noted family first streamer. It is what it is. Yeah, I don't know. I feel I feel better today. There's there's no doubt about that. I'm not an idiot. Like I know Oh my god. The like the antibiotics are like they don't work immediately. Like, you know, it It's like shaving your chest, you know? You're not going to get all the bacteria on the first or the second dose. You know, that's why I've got 14 doses here. But I'm, I'm a little bit picked up here. I'm feeling a little bit picked up for sure. Yeah, you got to take the whole thing. Yeah, I know. I'm done with the, with the medical concern trolling. NL, antibiotic resistance is a very serious thing. Yeah, I know. I know. Please make sure. Don't. You absolutely have to run the whole course. Yes, I know. My pharmacist told me that as well. I'm going to follow my pharmacist's advice on this. How'd you have diarrhea for three weeks and not die? Now, this is where you're going to have to allow me some egocentrism. Um, I honestly think that I have a stronger will to live than the average person. I'm, I, I guess in a way I am suggesting that I'm built different. Like for, especially when it was at its peak, when I was having diarrhea like once every 90 minutes. I was drinking like a pint of water every time I went to the bathroom. I don't think, I think a lot of people would simply have chosen to die. They would have been like, I'm, it, that's an uncomfortable amount of water to drink. I'm just going to skip a couple of waters and then they would be dead, I think. 
I refused. I said, I don't want to die. Every, I, I, every time I've gone to the grocery store, I've bought like, you know, Gatorade. Is it, is it in you? I bought apple juice. I bought apple juice thinking it was apple juice. Actually, it was peach juice. Whatever. Drink like a liter and a half of that shit a day. So that's, that's how I didn't die is basically I, 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 refu I at least refuse to die of dehydration. That's maybe an oversimplification, but you could have also just held it in. That's the other thing I didn't mention. But yeah, in, I guess you could have just been like, ah, I really have to go to the bathroom, but I'm just like not going to do it right now. Because like, I think I've gone too much. Did you drink tea too? I'm going to need you to shut up immediately. The people who say, oh, why didn't you just eat rice? Ooh. Did you drink some tea? Did you try the go mad diet? This one, this course of medicine and treatment is a huge dub for modern medicine. I would like, I, I'm dedicating today's stream to the existence of the modern medical industry. I had a CT scan yesterday. You think a caveman ever got a, a CT scan? I don't think so. Damn machine was talking to me and everything. It was going like, hold your breath. Breathe normally. It was, it was the damn future, man. It was like being at Epcot. Then my doctor called me with the results and was like, they weren't conclusive. And I was like, all right, maybe modern medicine still has some room to grow. But <laughs> I appreciate the attempt at least. Uh, they did CT scan that mummified uh, caveman. We produced the uh, the one sound that we thought it could make. Ah! Classic, great bit. Can Chubby Emu make a YouTube video based on your struggle? Yeah, if we ever get like you know, like at the end of Contagion, they show you that like the thing that started it all was like a uh, industrial truck knocked over a mango tree, and then like a bunch of bats flew out of it, and then the bats pooped in like a livestock area where like a pig ate the poop and then the pig got shipped to like a casino uh kitchen where the chef was like butchering it and then the chef just wipes his hands on his shirt and then shakes hands with Gwyneth Paltrow and you're like oh snap dude if we ever get to like reverse engineer what caused this then then absolutely you have my permission. This man accidentally ate a cat turd. You won't believe what happened next. Did they give you an idea of where it came from? I don't think it's like what they do. I think I need to hire like a cop for that. I don't think it's like, and the bacteria had um, barbecue sauce on it. <laughs> it's got where the, the stool sample returned a strong uh, positive for the marker known as barbecue sauce. I'm Dr. Slam the Fart, and unfortunately, I just got back the results from your epic gamer tests, and it looks like the cause of you always being fat, shit, bald, and stanky is because you're simply retarded. Hello, chat. I am feeling euphoric. It's been a, a, a landmark morning. As mentioned, first off, I feel great. Well, I have a little bit of a cold, that I will admit. But the antibiotics are working like crazy. I wasn't asleep at 8 p.m. last night. I had the energy to spend time with my daughter um, before she went to bed. I feel like myself again, rather than like a, a passenger in a trapped a vessel composed of rotting flesh. So that's pretty fantastic. Um, and then also, check this out. I had a phone call with my family doctor and my stool samples came back. I know a lot of people have speculated what could have possibly caused this. I don't know if I'm happy to report or if I'm uh, uh, shocked to report that I had... And, and I guess to some extent still do until the course of antibiotics is over, I had simultaneous infections of both Salmonella and Campylobacter. So I, let's just look up Salmonella 
real quick. I just want to see the symptoms. The causes, I'm not so concerned with. Symptoms. Diarrhea, stomach cramps, fever, nausea, vomiting, chills, headache, blood in the stool. Okay, we don't need to get into that last one. I was spared from that. And then Campylobacter. Let's see. Signs and symptoms. When to call a doctor. Diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, belly cramps, bloating, and fever. Okay. So that's like uh, exactly the same. <laughs> But I, I had them both at the same time, I guess. And um, then my doctor said, the reason that it was so hard for you to get a diagnosis is because this kind of severe, simultaneous uh, double infection rarely occurs in the first world, which was news to me. She asked me like 10 times if I've traveled recently. Uh, and I was like, no. And then I was like, well, I did go to Western Washington. And she was like, oh, did you go camping? And I'm like, nope. Um, I was just, I was like in a house. I was just in a house. So she was like, S seriously, like, this does not happen at often at all in, um, in like the Western world. And that's why, I mean, she was very apologetic but she was like that's why every time you went to the er they were like it's probably not food poisoning you probably have inflammatory bowel syndrome because your symptoms have gone on too long for it to be food poisoning then that's why they made you go through a ton of imaging instead of uh you know really putting a rush as much of a rush as you could on on getting the cultures back and stuff like that also and i i told you i was feeling euphoric my uh, my family doctor apologized profusely for the substandard speed and level of care and said, to be honest with you, we have uh, patients who call in for absolutely every ache and pain and bully their way to the front of the line because they think it's an emergency. But knowing you, um, you should not just call in and like, list your symptoms to the front desk, you should call in and say, you know, like, this is my name and this is like an actual emergency. I need to speak to my doctor as soon as possible, which was really nice to hear from, uh, from a doctor, honestly. So is your problem everybody else sucks? Dude, that's, I, I mean, what else is new, right? Is one of the recurring themes of what I talk about. Somebody, one in 200 people lets their dog shit on the carpet in the apartment building. Everybody's got to face the a two hour long meeting about not letting your dog shit on the carpet in the apartment building, right? So I, I, I got confirmation that I'm, uh, you know, just, it's society, I'm a victim of society, not a participant, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So she was like, yeah, like this, what you went through was not okay. The part of the reason that you went through it was because literally this is like a once in a lifetime infection for a you know, a 33-year-old man in North America. I was getting, like, you know, you, you get a little peek behind the curtain. But she was like, when we have patients who, like, travel to countries where so-called traveler's diarrhea is common, we just give them a prescription of antibiotics as, a, as like, a precaution. And I was like, you just, <laughs> you're just giving this shit away? You know how many hoops I had to jump through in order to, or go to the hospital three times being like, I have such horrible diarrhea and like, uh, I feel like I'm fighting a battle with like a demon inside of me and every day the demon gets like 10% closer to winning. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know, I'm feeling a lot better. Campylobacter is like the worst thing I've ever had in my entire life. I'm glad to hear that. Everything online says Campylobacter's common in Canada. I don't know. I'm just going by what my doctor told me. I mean, she's a general practitioner. Not, not to be rude, but I don't expect her to have like an encyclopedic knowledge of, you know, the incidence rate of every kind of bacterial infection. I do trust her more than chat, I guess. But I'm so happy to finally have like uh, a, a name for what has been like driving me crazy. It's the number one cause of bacterial gastroenteritis in Europe with over 246,000 cases confirmed annually. It can also cause bacteremia in immunocompromised people. Maybe I got that too. Let's see what the hell is bac bacteremia. 
bacterial and fungamious when infections are fungal it's a it's a bloodstream infection causes gram positive bacteremia gram negative bacteria that's all the bacteremias man that's every single one of the bacteremias unless there's some that are i guess like gram neutral or something i'm out of bacteremias well honestly jay i'm quite happy for you if you quit bragging so yeah um long story short I'm um, built different. I'm lucky to be alive. I got um, a third world bout of uh, gastroenteritis in living in Vancouver, British Columbia somehow. I have no idea how that happened. But uh, it was nice to hear my doctor be like, hey, you must have felt like pure shit. And I was like, yeah, like I'm not a doctor and I've never died. But I now have like a new Overton window for what uh, like, I feel like it would be, it, like, I've, I felt like I was on the road to slowly dying, for sure. Like, I, I was not just like, oh, I feel bad. I was like, I'm pretty sure, like, if I, and th this is just my hunch, but I'm like, if, if I didn't get antibiotics, like, within two weeks, I think that we would have been having some dire conversations. Although, apparently... When you take the first antibiotic pill, it just, like, sorts you out, like, immediately. Like, I felt amazing yesterday. I, f I feel incredible today. It's just a shame that shit is, like, impossible to get. Did you ever think, what a way to go out? I mean, th there was a large period of time where I was like, um, oh, no, I, I actually, I made all the jokes about toxic megacolon. And then I said, if I die of toxic megacolon, you have my permission to make fun of me. And now I'm going to die of toxic megacolon. And I don't want you to make fun of me because actually it's fucking torturous. I want you to have sympathy instead. There was some dread in my, in, in my psyche. And not only do I feel fantastic, by the way, but the appetite has been going crazy. I honestly, so like, I had to draw, sorry for this again. We're coming to the end of the endless diarrhea anecdotes, okay? I promise. But I had to drop off uh, some more stool samples yesterday. And uh, right after I dropped them off, I know this would probably not be advisable for someone recovering from an intestinal infection. I went through the McDonald's drive through 10 piece fries, large Coke Zero. I ate it all in, I'm going to say four minutes. And it, it hit a gut that was so empty that I forgot that I ate it within like 30 minutes. How much stool have you provided to the laboratory over the past couple weeks? Um, five samples. I didn't, I didn't want to say five cups. Because it's not five cups. But it is five samples. It's not five gallons. <coughs> this coffee tastes like shit. Austin, Austin, don't drink the coffee, man. It's got salmonella and campylobacter in it. Well, it is rather not. Austin! Austin, you're going to die. I can make it. I've never been less scared of anything. Look at, are you seeing this? I'm a changed man. That was on purpose. I wouldn't expect you to understand. Go ahead, hit me, see if I give a shit. Hank! Hank, don't eat the, don't eat the chocolate in the fridge. It's actually my stool sample. So me and my doctor, we were trying to figure out what gave me the combination salmonella campylobacter. I'm at the combination salmonella campylobacter infection site. And I was being, um, I mean, I'm a logical guy. I'm actually like, I mean, maybe logical to a fault to some extent, which I don't actually think is a virtue. I think if anything, it's annoying. But I was like, I bet when I was making some food, um, I probably ate something that I shouldn't have eaten. And she was like, well, you don't eat raw chicken, do you? And I was like, no, but maybe I cut some raw meat and then I like didn't wash my hands perfectly. And then I was like, ooh, raw green peppers slice and then ate it and then like, who knows, right? And she was really trying to like get me to be like, 
well, did you eat at any, like, restaurants that you think could have given it to you? And I was like, no. I really think that it was probably me. If it, if it was food born in the first place, I think it was probably my fault. I went to the hospital and I had two broken feet. The guy who got triaged in front of me had an upset stomach. I know how this sounds, okay? So this is gonna sound like I'm, I'm actually like the biggest asshole of all time. But let me advocate for the upset stomachs. I mean, if you got two broken feet, that's just it, right? Like, it's not like it's gonna progress from two broken feet into like, oh, now you're having a heart attack, right? Like, they know what they're gonna... Yeah, I, I agree they should give you some, like, pain meds as soon as possible. But at the same time, you know, some dude who's, who feels like his stomach hurts so bad that he has to go to the ER, then you're like, you know, maybe you gotta take a look at that. You gotta... It doesn't matter. By the way, the guy with the upset stomach, he probably wasn't like, yes, I got in early. Because instead of treating him for bacterial infections, they're going to be like, nah, man, it could only be an inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. So even though he has diarrhea 10 times a day, let's make him sit in the waiting room of radiology for three hours while we try to squeeze in a CT scan real quick. And for the love of God, I, I, as the managing director of this hospital, I forbid you from giving him antibiotics. We wouldn't want to contribute to the rise of um, antibiotic resistance. Okay, only if he produces a ticket stub that says he's traveling to the jungle somewhere do I give you permission to give him some antibiotics, okay? And it definitely, I mean, I was, when she said salmonella, I had like a, a, a deep sigh. Like, okay, when I tell people that I have salmonella, they will be like, that's bad. I, you have my sympathy. But then when she said, and Campylobacter, at first I thought she said, you had Salmonella Campylobacter. Like that was one bacterial Latin name. And I was like, oh, Salmonella. And then she was like, no, Salmonella and Campylobacter. And I was like, this is gonna get me a lot of sympathy. Let's go. I can't wait. I'm picking my daughter up from daycare this afternoon. Hey, how are you guys doing? Pretty good, how about you? A uh, pretty shit, actually. Um, I had a simultaneous salmonella. Remember three weeks ago how I told you I had food poisoning? Yeah, it turns out I actually had a severe simultaneous salmonella and campylobacter uh, infection in my gut at the same time. I was in the hospital on Tuesday, got a CT scan, a couple of stool samples and a blood test run. Yeah, they say it doesn't really happen in Canada very often. I'm, I might be like the first one. Those other daycare parents, they're not gonna know what hit them, man. Uh, 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 I was up late with my kid last night. Oh, really? That sounds rough. I was busy, uh, man moding two of the most infectious bacteria on the damn planet because doctors have a mandate not to trust 33 year old men in the hospital unless they accidentally, like, you know, power drilled through their forehead or something like that, doing home improvement, eight Labatt Blues deep on a Sunday. Don't worry, they don't trust women either. Look, I'm not... It doesn't have to be like that. But we've had to take my wife to the ER a few times. They wheel her in on a stretcher. They find her, like, a room as soon as possible. They, she still has to wait a long time. But then, like... And I'm, I understand why they do it. But they, like... Like, four doctors come in and they go, Sir, could you please step outside? And then they ask her questions about, like, you know... Does he hit you? I'm sure is is what comes up in the interview. I didn't get any of that shit. They just put me in a lit a chair. Didn't even have me put on like a hospital gown. They just put me in a chair and then they go, "All right, buddy, sit tight." And then I'm just sitting there waiting until it, it's my on, on basically until they've made me sit there long enough that they can be like, "Well, we don't know what's wrong with you, so we're just gonna like send you home." I also, I've explained to them that um, my doctor made it clear to me these kind of infections don't occur in the first world. Yeah. So, I don't know what happened with that one, um, but I, I would definitely say I'm built different. It was so fulfilling to hear our doctor say, like, you must have felt like complete garbage. Why she, she says that, she would be like, oh, it's like, you must be feeling so bad. And she was like, I was mad at her that I didn't get seen promptly. And she was like mad at me that I didn't get seen promptly. <laughs> like, she was like, Ryan, next time this happens, like, don't talk to front desk. Just call in and say, you know, this is my name and I have an emergency. I need to talk to your doctor's name. Yeah, that's what I told you to do it. And then 
Yeah, but I'm like. You wiggle around, you're like, oh, they said just make an appointment through the I'm like, I, here's the thing. You're like such a nerd. I'm society's last good boy. Who is like, follows the rules. Everybody else is like, I would, they would tell a lie in a heartbeat to advance their own personal situation. And I'm like, oh, I'm at the hospital because I'm sick. Everybody else is like, I'm at the hospital. I need to see a doctor right now. And it's like, you need, you need some of that because you were feeling really bad. But instead you were like, oh, it's okay. I'm not like on the verge of death. So I'll just uh, wait here and sit down on the bench. Thank you very much. I guess it's true what they say. Nice guys do finish last. Yeah, death. I'm, I'm, right out, the death. I'm out here getting... I'm gonna have like a funeral or something like that. Some bad boy who had a little bit of a sore throat is gonna live until he's like 95 years old because every time he goes to the hospital, he's like, I'm dying! They're like, you're not dying. No, they get, they get a little, Here's some know. Tamiflu. Okay, get the fuck out of here. You, you're so... Uh, annoying to be around. Here's some Tamiflu. Get out of here. I got I got a dude with simultaneous Salmonella and Campylobacter infections to ignore. We're gonna give him his 18th uh, uh, colonoscopy to just verify really for real this time that he doesn't have ulcerative colitis. At least you're not gonna get camera poked into your butt. I still might. Um, apparently. You wanna, you wanna get camera poked in your butt? I don't really wanna get a colonoscopy, but... Apparently, due to the severity of the infection, they, they may want to do some follow-ups just to verify that there was no underlying conditions that contributed to this. Which is, you know, that seems very reasonable to me. I accept it either way. It's only bad when they, when they want to sample... When they want to sample you. And, uh, they the, when they the do a bio biopsy. Yeah, yeah. they, they tear, tear like the inside of your intestine. I'm, go, Yoink. I'm here to tell you, quite frankly, that after what I've lived through, I know that sounds dramatic, but it's sincere. If they had been like, hey, we want to give you a colonoscopy, is that okay? I would be like, why are we still sitting here? Give me give me the barium or whatever. I'll I'll send everything out into the toilet and let's get that camera up there. Like, I would do whatever they... You know, I, I, I mean, you just look at my arms. You know how many times I've been... Oh, I got, you, you look like a drug addict. I know, I got so many holes in my... I got, you show them the bruise? This is horrible. I don't know how well you can see it. You're, you're not showing it. It's hard to get it to show up for the camera, but like, from where I got like all my IVs and stuff like that, I got it. I got a nasty bruise. Like I got, green. I got like four holes in each arm from like where they've taken blood, oh my God. and that shit didn't even like matter. Like that, that hurt for like a second. It was the symptoms that were the worst. <laughs> the symptoms were were by far the worst. I always told them, stop taking the food while I'm cooking, and he's like, yoink, yoink. Taking the green onions, yoink, and then yoink got you. The, yo the yoink did get me. I am not. don't have an ego about it. I'm not like, oh, you know, I'm sure that it was like the cat poop. I'm like, there's a pretty good chance it was probably my half-assed cleanliness standards during food preparation. It's definitely not a cat poop anymore. Ruka and Tomo is innocent. They're like, dude, we innocent now. It was the yoink. This is, I'm, I'm a rational enough adult to be like, like this has changed my life a little bit. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my behavior in response to this. That's good, that's good. Stop yoinking the green onions. I'm gonna stop yoinking the green onions. I am, I, I, I'm thoroughly washing my hands. I'm not just like giving it you like a six out of 10 hand wash. Every single one is like, I'm about to go into like surgery as the surgeon. I was about to get you like a smartwatch because my Apple Watch counts you down for like washing hands. And then it helps me. Oh, I, un I understand. I was like, maybe I should get you And then maybe, like, does the smartwatch come with some capability where, like, if I went to the hospital, um, I could just show them my Apple Watch and be like, look, three red squares. No, but it does calculate your heartbeat. And so if, when your heartbeat is, like, uh, really, really high for more than 10 minutes, 
the watch give you a warning and be like, yo, what are you doing? Yeah, don't. I, I was just about to say, just before you came in, that I've, I've been ragging on the medical system a lot, but another thing that happens, that, uh, that happened, that annoys the crap out of me, is when they give you tests and then they don't tell you the results. Um, like, when I went to the ER on Saturday, I didn't even know, they took my heart rate, and then, like, an hour later, a nurse came in and was like, hey, why is your heart rate so high? I was like, I'm, I thought I was relaxed, man. And then they're like, we're going to give you some fluids to get your heart rate down. And I'm like, I didn't even know that there was anything wrong with my heart. And then some lady came in with an EKG, which was also painful because I had to rip the damn sensors off of my belly hair when it was done. But well, it's, only, it's only painful because Ryan is very hairy. They, they, so she gave me an EKG and I'm like, what the hell? I came in here because my stomach hurts. Now they're giving me an EKG. And then I realized when I got... Uh, discharged they never followed up about the EKG so I was like well I sure hope like my heart's okay because you did like a fairly serious test uh, on it and then never came in and said hey just so you know by the way your EKG was totally fine yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. instead I'm gonna uh, probably I'm gonna end up getting a follow-up call from our family doctor that's like hey the, your cardiologist called about the EKG right and I'm gonna be like no and they're gonna be like oh you fucking look like an etch-a-sketch you're gonna die they didn't follow up? Are you sure? That doesn't sound right. Remember, I had that too, but then they're like, oh, it's, it's, all good. it's crazy, man. If they don't talk about it, then it's good. That's positive, that's the, yeah. That's the rule of thumb. Or they forgot about you. But that only happens like 30% of the time, so. It does, it does feel bad because when I'm sick and I go to ER, they're like, put her on the wheelchair. People, I, the I was telling people that they didn't believe me. Instead, they said like bad take, like why are you sexist? And I was like, no, my wife gets like the white glove treatment when she goes to the hospital. There's like, probably a statistical, statistically valid reason that maybe men are a little bit like not treated as well when they go to the hospital because pro we probably tend to have less health complications at our age. We're also not like going to be pregnant, like so th that's not a concern that we have to worry about as well. Because you're white and male and bald, it's the that's the thing. I think it's I think they they see me and they're like this guy's gonna keep paying his taxes. He's not good. Look at him. He loves being a cog in the damn machine. He's not gonna kick up a stink. I think if you weren't bald. They might have put you on a wheelchair. <laughs> but then because you're bald, they're like, ah, this guy, this guy, he can just, you know, walk. You, you know what the problem is? I did, I kept up my standards of personal grooming. <laughs> if I had let the skullet grow in, yeah, and yeah, I was yeah. like, hey, I'm not feeling so well. And they'd be there like, okay, go. sir, um, what was it like to be born in the 50s? And I'd be like, I'm 33. They'd be like, oh my God, get this guy to a room immediately. Yeah. Holy cow. If you were on some hair, then you would have got like private uh, I thought money. you were like Gene Hackman's brother. You, you're a millennial? You were born in the in the late 1980s? I'm okay. I'm dead. The guy was like, I might be admitted to a hospital. I was like, oh my god. Are you in the wheelchair or are you in bed? And then he's like, no, I'm just sitting on the chair. And I'm like, what? I'm, I swear to you that I'm not joking. When I had my appointment with the internist and she was like, we're going to admit you to the hospital. Um, she was like, okay, so first go to the lab and like do this test. Then go to radiology and do this test. And then I'll find you. And I said, you don't want me to like come back here and go be in the waiting room? And she was like, no, nah, just go wherever you want and I'll find you. Doesn't seem like a perfect system to me. I do have to admit she did find me. But I I also just really good at wear as well, I do sort of wonder like why she wouldn't just have me come back into the waiting room and be like that you know it's easy enough to find you. I'm not gonna wipe my nose with a McDonald's napkin. I've been through enough. I'm using Kleenex. From now as my promise to myself, I'm only using double ply aloe infused kleenex from now on i'm treating myself different and you're only gonna eat the potato and rice 
I'm gonna I'm gonna be on the brat diet from now on. Bread. I do. I'm. Potato. This is not a. I'm taking this as like because as you know my gastrointestinal system was not perfect to begin with. I produced more gas than the average person, and it smelled a lot worse than the average person's gas. Would you say that this is true or false? You're asking me a question. Yes. Yeah. That's definitely true. Okay. So. The downside of taking an antibiotic is that it's also going to kill off the good bacteria in my gut. But I'm sort of treating this as like an opportunity to rebuild my gut biome. So once this course of antibiotics is done, I got to start eating some yogurt. I got to start eating a lot of fermented foods. I got to start taking some probiotics. And as a result of that, I'm hoping maybe this could be the start of a of a recolonized, healthy gut. That's good. I'm treating it as a as a an opportunity for a, a positive reset. That one. Hurt. How was the daycare trip reaction with the other parents, bro? I don't want to talk about it, okay? Because like the other parents have the audacity to have their children out sick from the daycare right now. Which means it's just me and one other mom at pickup. And every time, like, she's already heard the story about how I almost died. So I need to get some new damn material. I, re I need the other parents to be back at, uh, at daycare so that I can regale them with the story. But, like, you, I, I, I can't regale them with the story next week about how I almost died last week. They'd be like, they're gonna say, get some new material. Oh, you almost died? When? Last week? Okay, uh... You know who almost died last week? Uh... Freaking... Uh, Methuselah, the world's first man. It's ancient history. What, a, what an incredible gate crash round here. Look at that. I missed it. What was the problem? I got diagnosed with a simultaneous Salmonella and Campylobacter infection that had been raging inside of my gut and intestines for three weeks. I still think it's so funny that like, uh, the, the Salmonella and Campylobacter in, in my stomach, vibing in two pH hydrochloric acid. The Salmonella and Campylobacter, when I swallow one little penicillin mushroom boy, no! Nature is crazy, man. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry. Nature is crazy, dude. Can you explain it in Minecraft terms? Yeah, it's like I got withered and also had, like, hunger at the same time. So, like, I was... When I wasn't on stream, I was just going like, oof, 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 like, constantly. Holy cow, is the most insane performance on this level that's ever been mustered. Anyone who says anything about ketchup, by the way, instantly banned. We don't respect that kind of comedy here. Look at this. Don't push me! Could you explain it in chess terms? Um... Yeah, I mean, my queen and my rook got forked. Basically. Really milking this almost dying thing? Well, it's like the first time it's ever happened to me. I've never had another, like, almost died situation. But I've had to hear about, like, fucking hundreds of them from people, right? When I was six, my soccer ball went out into the road, and I went out to get it, and then a car hit slammed on the... Okay, well, now I, got, now I can match you. Okay, I almost died. I was 33. I had a simultaneous infection of Salmonella and Campylobacter. My doctor said um, it doesn't happen outside of the third world somehow. And yet here I am. How close were you to death? I'm not a doctor or a, like a mortuary. I don't know. But I do think that if I didn't... If, if antibiotics did not exist... I do think I probably would have died, but it might have taken like a month. Like, I, I was fighting a war with the bacteria, and there was no doubt that the bacteria was winning. 
every day I woke up and I like, like there was another troubling sign. I mean, you saw the comments in the thread. People were like, this man looks like a ghost. Look at how big you are compared to a bacteria. Bro, yeah, but it's like the one horse sized duck versus 20 duck sized horses, right? Like there is like literally like probably trillions of the, of two different types of bacteria tag teaming me in my gut simultaneously. My body was getting his ass kicked. And then, like, every time the bacteria, like, fucking outcompetes my cells, the bacteria is like, mmm, I'm just gonna excrete, like, some fucking toxic shit. I'm just gonna, like, destroy this tissue here that's perfectly fine, if that's cool with you. And, and I guess my body was like, yeah, don't worry about it. I wasn't using that. Thanks for that, by the way, body. I really... I, I, I thought I've been, like, nurturing you and... You know, decent diet, regular exercise. My body's like, oh no, bacteria! Uh, I don't know what to do. I don't feel like adulting today. Exhausted all my like white blood cells fighting the 17 different illnesses my daughter brings back from daycare every 25. Like, what you got? Just get me out of here. I'm sorry. We look at that. You only gotta wait for three people to get to the end there. I'm sorry. That's a loss. I'm not, I don't want to go through six loading screens just to go back to the queue. That one was over. But yeah, like I'm doing, I'm not being facetious. Without antibiotics, I don't think I would have been dead next week. But I do think if, and, and I think that if, basically, if I didn't have an appointment on, or if I didn't get that cancellation appointment on Tuesday, what probably would have happened is that I, on like fucking Friday, I would have been like, I need to go to the hospital immediately yet again. And then they probably would have given me antibiotics on that visit or on the next visit. Or like at some point they would have been like, this motherfucker is going to die in my hospital. And they would have hooked me up, right? But if antibiotics did not exist, I do think that this shit would have killed me. The cavalry was not coming in. Like there was a time where it was like bad and then it got a little bit better. And that lasted for like four days. And then it got a lot worse. So I don't, I don't think, I think my immune system fired all the missiles and then it was like, that should take care of it. And then it didn't take care of it. And my body was like, okay, start repackaging some of these elements so that they can be used by the soil. It is pretty fucked up that one day antibiotics won't work. I mean, I was getting a little mad when I was reading about Campylobacter. Like, did you know that Campylobacter 10 years ago was easily treatable with antibiotics? Now it has a lot of antibiotic resistance because we're vac not vaccinating, but we're, we're medicating chickens in the poultry industry so they don't get sick. Bro, fuck them chickens. Let them get diarrhea, man. I need the antibiotics to be here in case I get this shit ever again. Are you crazy? You're creating like super pandemic god tier bacteria because you the poultry industry margins are too thin? Have you lost your mind? Plus, I probably got that shit from a chicken anyway. <laughs> so that shit does not work. Save the antibiotics for the people, man. I don't think a chicken invented penicillin. When a chicken invents uh, medicine, they can take the medicine instead of me, okay? If the medicine worked for both of us, that would be fine as well, okay? But when you, the thing with the antibiotics is like a zero-sum game. As soon as you give the antibiotics to like one colony of bacteria, like one of those motherfuckers is going to survive and come back to the horde and then tell the rest of them the secrets to, to live, right? So say you got to save those for, for the taxpayer. I'll say it again. Fuck those chickens. Save the antibiotics for the people, man. Biologist here, this is accurate. Look, it was, ana it was an analogous representation of the way that evolution works, okay? Can you imagine? It's just one of those things where, I, like, you know, when I thought about how I would die in my life, never was I like, oh, you know, slowly colonized by a food-based illness, right? Like a bacteria that I consumed. I, I can't imagine the, the rage that I would have in my heart knowing I was going to die because the poultry industry shot their whole fucking antibiotic wad to lower the price of chicken tenders by 25 cents, which didn't even fucking work because of inflation anyway. So I have to die so that like a bunch of chickens can live long enough to be fucking eaten by people who lived. This shit is, is backwards. Doesn't make any damn sense. 
So I'm I just got I got you know what? Next chicken tenders I eat, guaranteed A and W. They're antibiotic free. Five dollar Costco rotisserie though. Well, you know what? In a pinch, if I don't feel like cooking, maybe sure. Didn't you just have McDonald's nugs? Hey, those were prescribed to me, by me. I deserve those. It feels so good to actually have like, so I, I've had like a varying appetite over the course of the, the illness. It feels so good to have like a ravenous appetite back. Holy cow. Like I, it feels so encouraging for my future that I feel like I could eat like a whole Pizza Hut large meat lover's pizza right now. The the doctor probably would not want me to do that, but I want to, I do lunch today. I should find a damn buffet or something like that. I feel like I could probably eat like 50 samosas today. Do not go to a buffet. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. I think I'm actually gonna become like a food psycho. I think I might become one of those. I'm, I'm not saying I'm going to eat well done steak, but I have, I've had to talk myself through some stuff. Like, so there would just be like, I don't know how to describe it. It's just like, you know, normally, if you bought like a cut of meat at a grocery store, if you bought like two steaks at the grocery store and you put them in the fridge, how long would you let them be in the fridge before you chucked them? Before you were like, that's, that's not good anymore. Three to four days, five days. I think previously I was like a four day guy. Now I'm like a one day guy. Like, if, I feel like if I'm not eating that shit in a day, it's going straight into the freezer. Which is where food goes to die for me, but like, I think it'll fade over time. Yeah, it's like when you, you know, throw up due to alcohol, and then like if you smell alcohol, you're like, I want to throw up. But then next Friday rolls around and you're like, sure, I'll try some. I, I, I'm sure it'll wane, but like, but right now I'm a little... Maybe not paranoid, but I'm like a little gun shy about about food safety for sure. No, I don't know the culprit. But again, I acknowledge that it was probably me. It was probably unsafe handling of, of poultry would be my expectation. Unfortunately, it's not like there's a CCTV footage that exists of like, oh, look at it. It's the chicken sashimi. Why don't you people educate yourselves? Need How am I doing? Am I critic you? You're really close. To are me. you afraid? You I, should run away. I don't like. But how you close have you your are. super mask on. Would you get a fecal transplant if it moderately improved your health? Yes, abs in a heartbeat. Why wouldn't I? Because it's icky. What are you talking about? What reason would there be to to not recycled bit? I mean, they asked the question. The hell is a fecal transplant? Sometimes when your gut flora is out of whack. You can get a, a literal transplant of someone else's feces to kind of give you like a little sourdough starter in your, you know what, and and kickstart your, uh, you know, growing some some good gut bacteria instead. I don't even think it's that gross. Maybe, maybe this is like, it's not too far, but like, maybe people would take this as like an extreme. But like, compare the, I mean, it's no grosser in my opinion, well, maybe it's a little grosser to put someone else's poop up your butt, but it's not that much grosser than the procedure I had to go through for stool samples. And it's not that, I mean, I don't know. I felt kind of gross is not the, the right word, but at least like when I was in the CT scan, I was like, this shit is very unnatural, which is fine. I don't have a problem with it, but I was like, I am basically shoving my abdomen in like an enormous spinning fucking magnet or something. I don't even know what it is. Like, I feel like I'm in a Ridley Scott movie right now. I don't like to think of myself as a client to the doctor. I like to think of myself that they're like the drill sergeant and I'm the private who just showed up. I don't want to have to go to my doctor and be like suggesting treatment. I want them to diagnose me and then suggest the treatment. Maybe that's naive of me. But I don't like the idea of like going to the doctor and being like, here's what I want. Although I'm a little bit like more open to it after the experience that I had. In nursing now, we literally are taught to refer to our clients as patients or our patients as clients. This is an honest question. How do people feel about that? Because, you know, I, w I grew up in having the idea that 
when it comes to our health, doctors and nurses are professionals who deal with this stuff all day. And I'm just like a guy. You know, if I don't have any medical expertise, I would la rather leave it to the people with medical expertise. But then I did also realize, like, you know, as I went through this experience, I was like, the flip side of that is that the doctor also doesn't know what it feels like to be me right now. And I, I recognize that, I don't know if it's because I have, like, a, a more stilted demeanor, a deep voice, a relatively, like, level disposition and stuff like that, but... In hindsight, every doctor I had until I got referred to the internist was basically like, well, this guy feels bad enough that he would take a day off work and spend his whole fucking day sitting in a room full of people with COVID uh, in order to see a doctor for 15 minutes. But otherwise, I think he probably just needs some like rest and relaxation, right? And uh, I recognize that next time I go to the doctor, I got to be a little smarter about... Um, Basically, like, playing up how I... It's more like being... Honest. I never downplayed my symptoms, but like an idiot, the doctor would be like, What are your symptoms? And I would be like, Oh, joint pain. What I should have said is like, Oh, I can't bend my elbow without like 10 out of 10 pain. And I can't... I can't sleep. And then they would have been like, Okay, we're gonna get you on like some antibiotics immediately. Instead, I was like, you know, um, joint pain and diarrhea and some nausea. And they were like, well, it sounds like a bacterial infection. So here's the thing. If it gets any worse, spend another day uh, in the ER. Come back and maybe if you're lucky, we'll give you some antibiotics. If we've decided that your life is worth the hit that the poultry industry might take from quinine-based uh, antibiotics no longer working for Tyson Farms as well as it did uh, recently. And, uh, well, we'll have you set on your way then. Just make, make sure you drink a lot of fluids, okay? Okay, my man? Okay, see you later. Hey, and if it gets any worse, don't hesitate to come back in. Do I get to move to, like, the front of the line or something? Because we've already gone through the triage? <laughs> oh, no! No, absolutely not. No, you gotta start at the beginning. That wouldn't be fair. So, anyway. I don't know. I guess what I'm saying is that if you trust the doctors and the nurses, I guess you've also got to trust the people teaching the doctors and the nurses. And if you trust them, then if they think they should be referring to you as a client, then maybe there's something to that. But I'm real. I mean, the older I get, I'm involuntarily becoming old school because the world changes, right? Over time. So I'm like the kind of guy that's like, no, a teacher and a parent should not be in collaboration on their child's education. You know, like the teacher should teach and the child should like do the work. And if they don't do the work, then they should like get in trouble. You know, when you go into a doctor, it shouldn't be like, oh, doctor, I don't want antibiotics. Is there some, I would just prefer not to take them. Uh, is there anything else? I want, I want a doctor that's like, so here's what's going to happen, motherfucker. You're going to take one of these two times a day. And you're going to finish the whole bottle because if you don't finish the whole bottle, you're contributing to the rise of antibiotic resistance that could one day threaten the entire human species. I'm, okay, okay, I get it. Did you listen to me? Did you, did you fucking listen to me? Like, that's, that's what I want from a doctor. I don't want, like, you know, so we're going to collaborate on, like, a treatment schedule for you. I want them to be like, this is the shit that is going to, like, keep you alive. And then I'll be like, okay, I'll do it because <laughs> I want to, because I want to live. But maybe, maybe I'm, maybe the Overton window has moved and now I sound like I'm 65 years old or something. I don't know. It's possible. You do? I'm okay with that. Like, I mean, what are you going to do? Like, have you ever seen a 65-year-old who sounds like a 20-year-old? They, they look stupid as hell. I would rather at least appear my age. Although I'm not 65 yet, now that I think about it. I heard from a doctor that they are not to make paternalistic moves. Well, that just sounds like a wording thing. Like, yeah, I would also prefer if my doctor didn't make paternalistic moves. Like telling me I can't borrow the car until I mow the lawn or something like that. But like, my doctor telling me like, hey, this is what's best for you. That's one where I'm like, I believe you. No! I wonder how long the I almost died story is milkable. Well, I'll tell you, it's longer than one week, motherfucker. You ever hear anybody else tell a story? They'll tell a story about how they got like a free McChicken from McDonald's for like 10 years. How much is the healthcare? Um, well, like 
so my appointments were free at the hospital and the ER visit and stuff like that. And I'm grateful for that, but it is kind of fucked. I had to pay for my um, prescription 14 doses of a, a powerful antibiotic that saved my life. $18.75. Shit's actually unacceptable. 7K for my ER visit? It's pretty fucked up. It is pretty insane. I paid $800 this past month just to confirm Cyrene didn't have cancer. Yeah, I mean, it's like the system is... Uh, look, I, I complained a lot about the Canadian system. I think you can hold these two things in your head simultaneously. You could be like, there's room for improvement in the Canadian system, but also be thankful that I don't live in America. Like... Because I've seen, like, the itemized receipt that you get when you get um, discharged from American hospitals. And it's, like, every bag of saline they give you is, like, $500. That doesn't seem sensible. And then you talk... Because our, our in-laws are not necessarily huge fans of the system to begin with. So I'm not saying they're complicit. But our in-laws are doctors. And I'm like, why the hell is it, like you know, $7,500 a day to be admitted to the hospital and have a bed. And they're like, well, they charge it at that level because like insure, if you have good insurance, insurance will actually pay or they'll dispute it down. So you have to like charge double in order to actually get what you think it's worth in the first place. And you're like, okay, well, this seems pretty fucked up if you don't have insurance that like, you know, basically, and then there's like life hacks that are like, if you get billed by the hospital, um, don't pay, just send it to collections and then like call the hospital collections department and be like, how are we going to work this out? Because I'm not going to pay this ridiculous bill that you sent me. So like, it just seems like, to, you know, you're already stressed to begin with. And then on top of that, to, to begin like a card negotiation to pay for life-saving care seems a little... I mean, it seems like it's, you're getting piled on a little bit. The thing with the Canadian system is that... I don't know. Is anybody out there like... has I, I feel like everybody loves the healthcare. Like in, in Canada specifically, everybody loves the healthcare when they're not interfacing with it and also right after they've interfaced with it. Like right now, I'm like, I love my doctor. I love my country. When I was actually trying to get care, I was like, uh, this fucking sucks. <laughs> But the thing you can the the thing you can say about the Canadian system is at the very least at least it's fair. Like if it sucks, it sucks for everybody. So sometimes they talk about having like uh and I don't know, maybe sucking for everybody is bad, but at least it's not like, well, it sucks for the average person, but if you're like insanely wealthy, it's amazing. At least you don't get like a a, a leg up just based on your net worth. Although you could, I guess, just go to the US and get treated. But I mean, how are you going to stop that regardless? Except when they hoard the antibiotics. Look, I wish that they were a little... I, I don't want them... Here's... Okay, you, you, this is going to be minus two me in advance, okay? They should not give everybody antibiotics when they come into the hospital or the doctor or the urgent care and say, I'm, I have a... I have strep throat, can I please get antibiotics? But they should, I think after what I've been through, they should give me like a stamp on my BC care card, which is like our health card, that says like, if this motherfucker comes in and asks for antibiotics, maybe just give him like two pills, follow up tomorrow to see how he feels, and then give him the rest of the dose or not the rest of the dose. Because I'm getting pretty fucking pissed off that just random chickens in Abbotsford are getting ciprofloxacin doses like every single day just to ensure that the Tyson poultry farms profits stay high. But when a human being wants to get some antibiotics, all of a sudden everybody's like, oh, we're really worried about creating antibiotic resistant bacteria. No, we can't give you the antibiotics. Then maybe they wouldn't work for the chickens anymore that you're going to eat anyway. I'm not pro-disease. I'm just like, you, you know what? The, okay, look, this is the easiest take of all time because nobody's going to dispute it. But like, 
I, I was alive in the 90s. My perception is that you could go to the doctor and just be like, I have a sore throat. And they'd be like, here's some fucking amoxicillin. Here's some penicillin. Here's some ciprofloxacin, you know? It, like, back in the day, they were just... They, they had, like, the T-shirt cannon from the from sporting events. And they were just shooting antibiotics out there. And then they fucked it for everybody. They had, like, 30 years where they were just sending anti... They were like, these are miracle drugs. And then, now, because everybody was freebasing amoxicillin in 1991... We can't get antibiotics anymore. It's like more restricted. They would happily give you like horse pills of uh, Purdue Pharmaceuticals OxyContin. But if you want an antibiotic because you have an infection, they're like, oh, we're worried about super bacteria. Anyway, I agree that we should go back to like the Wild West when, when you had a sore throat. Some apothecary went into the back room and used funnels to cook you up like some kind of custom tonic with a bunch of controlled substances in it and was like here take one of these and, and fuck off anyway don't do that people are like wait till you get c diff then you'll be sorry it's the same people that were in my uh twitter mentions hey egg thinking of you i had food poisoning for three days so i know what it's like i'm like fuck you you have no idea what it was like did you go to the hospital no, you just sat on your, the, your couch for two days and then you went fucking back to work. I went to the hospital three times, dude. You do not know what it was. Some people know what it's like. You don't know what it's like. Then people were like, wait till you get C. diff. Then you'll be sorry. Sorry about what? That I took life-saving antibiotics to not die and then I got C. diff? I guess I'll just die so I don't get C. diff. Got a lot, uh, and the fucked up thing is, based on the care that I received at the ER... You're probably a fucking doctor, okay? So I'm sorry that it hurts to hear criticism instead of just thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. I'm just giving you a patient user story. You can choose whether or not to take that information and adjust your behavior, or you can just be like, well, I went to school for 27 years, so I don't have to listen to anybody but myself. It's up to you. You C. diff. When you get C. diff, you'll be sorry you didn't let yourself get killed by Salmonella and Campylobacter. Motherfuckers are like gatekeeping bacterial infections this is the craziest shit i've ever heard in my entire life do you are you listening to yourself i almost died i need a doctor's note I, do you think the doctor would be mad if i called and said can you give me a note that says i almost died so i can like i would open that shit in a heartbeat i still haven't opened my million sub play button i would open that shit the second i receive i would cancel the stream to open it nl's radicalizing the chat I'm not radicalizing the chart, at least it's not my intention. I'm merely giving my experience that I had at the hospitals, okay? It is crazy, though. Like, there are some things that you can get without having to, like, be a, a, a squeaky wheel. I've told you the story before. When I told my doctor that we were going to Japan and I wanted, like, one Ambien that I could take on the flight, she was like, oh, she didn't even write me a, pres a prescription. She was like, the company that makes Ambien gave me like a bunch of free samples to give away so here's like 20 ambience i was like what the hell just gave me the pill like no questions asked then i wanted some damn antibiotics everybody in the emergency room is like why do you want the antibiotics so bad why do you want why do you want the ciprofloxacin so bad huh it's just a little sus that you're so in here you're you're like so focused on the antibiotics Oh, well, I think I have a bacterial infection. Oh, really? Well, why don't you just wait 11 days because it's Canada Day slash July 4th weekend and we'll see about that 11 days later. So, you, you didn't have a bacterial infection, Mr. Confident. You had two bacterial infections at the same time. Why didn't you tell me how bad you felt? Dude, like you came in and you're like, oh, my stomach hurts and I have endless diarrhea and my legs get a little stanky. You didn't tell me you felt that bad. Then I would have given you some antibiotics, dude. I, I no joke. And like, I'm, I'm not mining this for sympathy. I'm just telling you where I'm at. Someone in chat like a week ago was like, honestly, you may actually want to just talk to somebody about this because it sounds like you have like, you're having a trauma response. Like, it sounds like you're a little bit traumatized <laughs> from the experience. And I was like, you know what? I think you might be right. I think that with, with no 
Um, no malice, no sarcasm or cynicism. I think you might be, I think I might have been a little traumatized. I'm not trying to say, oh, like, oh, NL thinks he's traumatized because he had one little infection. I just mean, like, I think I might genuinely, uh, I don't know. I don't know what trauma feels like. It, 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 certainly, I seem a little fixated on this issue. <laughs> So that, that's probably like a symptom, if I had to guess. So not only, what you're saying is not only did I almost die, but I'm traumatized. Holy cow. That's like another week that I can mine this for sure. Gentlemen, why use guns when we can handle this like real men? Benny, look out! <laughs> Bullet immunity, you have bullet immunity! I'm bulletproof. So check it out, the motherfucking saga continues. You good point, slash moment, slash mo not, not available yet, not available yet. Finished the stream yesterday, check my phone, as, as one does. Six missed calls from my family doctor. Not great to see on your, on your missed calls log. Get a call from the family doctor this morning. She says, hey, how are you doing? I say, pretty good, pretty good. She says, so we ran a full genome sequence on your positive stool samples. And guess what? Thanks to the animal husbandry industry, we found out that your salmonella is moderately resistant to the antibiotic that you just finished your course of over seven days, and your Campylobacter is just full-on resistant. Not immune, I guess, but, uh, but resistant nonetheless. But I still, she was like, so we're just calling to make sure like you're actually getting better and you're actually okay? To which I said, yeah, I'm doing, I'm like, I, I feel symptomless. The stanky leg uh, cleaned up. My uh, gastrointestinal issues are fine. Um, I've been drinking these probiotics, trying to rebuild the microflora in my gut. So it's basically like, it's good that I have like no symptoms, but they told me to like keep monitoring it. Um, and they might have to put me on a course of like different antibiotics. I can't really complain because I do think still that the antibiotics saved my life. But my first thought was, um, thanks for giving me those antibiotics that killed like all the good bacteria in my stomach and just let the bad bacteria, uh, propagate and colonize without having any competition anymore. I, uh, <laughs> I really appreciate that. You just prescribed me with an antibiotic that killed all the bacteria uh, in my stomach, except for the ones that were causing me problems to begin with. But that, you know what? It, I'm, I'm still feeling good, honestly. The good bacteria is probably also resistant. I hope so, man. I hope, I mean, I've been drinking this BioK Plus stuff, right? Okay, it's a probiotic. It's kind of disgusting when you read the, the package. Because the, the drink is like 100 milliliters, and it says um, 50 billion bacteria in every single container. So, I'm, uh, I mean, when you really run the numbers on that, the density of bacteria, the concentration is, is outrageous. I don't even want to know. What is that, like 50 million bacteria per milliliter or something like that? I get that they're small, but it's kind of disgusting to think about. But at the same time, I do appreciate it. I'm, I'm hopeful that it's helping me out. Hello, Jay. Jay, I want to talk to you. I, I Like in a good way. But first, I need to read this comment because it's very good. Hey, NL, I heard you've been ill. I've been away from the stream as I've been suffering from a tri-contemporaneous Salmonella, Campylobacter, and Staphylococcus infection. You must have felt terribly, not quite as bad as me. I was clinically dead for three minutes until resuscitated, but still hope you're feeling better. Plus two, honestly, an incredible comment. I don't know if you spent all night writing that out to be like the perfect comment, but but that's a genuine plus two. Holy cow, that's a perfect comment. Honestly, to be honest, if I don't get sick again, the knowledge that the bacteria I had is antibiotic resistant is actually bizarrely good news because it means that my immune system doesn't fucking suck that bad. And instead, it was actually able to do some of the heavy lifting itself. So it's actually kind of like 
okay news as long as I don't have my gut be recolonized. So I'm, I'm happy to hear that I actually like still have some T-cells left or whatever, some lymphocytes, some white blood cells. I do appreciate that because the way the doctor made it sound is basically like at age 33, if you can't fight off a simultaneous, or simultaneous uh, Campylobacter and uh, Salmonella infection, then you know we need to get you in for like an urgent soul read. It's just, I'm, look, I, it's, I'm not mad and I'm, I'm not flaming, I'm just saying. Motherfuckers waited 10 days until my stool samples were fucking cultured in order to prescribe me with antibiotics. And then they fucking gave me antibiotics that the bacteria was already antibiotic resistant to. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. Thank God we waited so that you didn't give me antibiotics that would promote antibiotic resistant. Instead, you gave me antibiotics that my bacteria was already resistant to. I really appreciate the due diligence, doc. 10,000 years of human innovation and we barely begun to scratch the surface. I will say, like, I, I didn't, like, let my doctor have it this morning. I was very thankful to receive the phone call. But she did say, she was like, Ryan, I called you so many times yesterday. Why didn't you pick up? And I was like, I was at work. <laughs> and then she was like, I called you this morning. And I was like, yeah, that one's on me. My, my ringer is literally always on Do Not Disturb. I was like, oh, how, how fitting. I want to talk to the doctor. They're like, that'll be six weeks away. My doctor wants to talk to me to give me urgent, life-saving advice. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm at work. Okay. Maybe your doctor should have made a dono. Dude, so true. If my doctor gave some gifted subscriptions and said, hey, Ryan, how are you doing? Um, we just wanted you to know that your uh, salmonella is moderately resistant to ciprofloxacin. And your... Uh, Campylobacter is like fully resistant to ciprofloxacin. Then I would have been like, thanks for the gift subs, doctor. Any essay writers in chat? No, I would have been like, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. Does your doctor know to check your stream? No, she's also at work. I mean, that's the that's the dirty little secret, right? Everybody's at work. It's like, oh, uh, you got to go to the damn dentist. The dentist is open eight to five. You're at work nine to five. How the hell are you supposed to go to the damn dentist? Oh, I gotta go to the bank. The bank closes at 5. Oh, unfortunately, I also close at... I, I, like, open at 5. So what the hell am I supposed to do? You gotta take a damn day off? How about they take a damn day off and they come to my office and, and scale my teeth? It, it has, like, a bimodal sort of structure to it. I sit on the toilet. Within 30 seconds, I'm dumping. Then there's a, a two-minute lull. And then I'm dumping again. It's like there's almost like there's two chambers in there. I think if you get up af like right after the first chamber is empty, you're not emptying your colon every morning. Instead, you're just letting the chamber move forward one position and you got like a 48 hour poop by the time like the next day rolls around. You need to see a doctor. Well, I am getting a colonoscopy in a couple weeks. The hospital was was very adamant that after uh, after I got this uh, infection out of the way that I get a colonoscopy. Yes, from a doctor. Well, not even a doctor, like an insane doctor, like a doctor who also is like a filmmaker, I guess. <laughs> but I think it's kind of sus that they sedate you for a colonoscopy. I want to I want like a trip sitter to be in there so they're not taking uh, creep shots. They don't. They do. Because when I was talking to the uh, gastroenterologist on the phone, they were like, what's your weight? And I said, uh, 70 kilograms. And then they said, okay, 70 kilograms. But I was just kind of eyeballing it. Then while I was still on the phone, I Googled 70 kilograms to pounds. And it was like 154 pounds. And I was like, hold on, we got to go back. Can you add 10 to my weight? Because 10 kilograms to my weight? Because I don't want you to give me anesthesia for a 154 pound man. And then I wake up, you know, 75% of the way through the procedure and go, ah! <laughs> Can you say, can you, can you write on that, that I'm 110 kilograms, please? I haven't had a good night's sleep in 21 months. Game isn't changing your personality. That was the dual bacterial infection in your gut biome. I've chosen to take it as good news that the antibiotics were not that effective against the bacteria. Because I was worried that it meant 
Like, because everyone was telling me these infections only happen if you are, like, in the middle of the Amazon rainforest and get bit by, like, a weird frog or something like that. I was honestly like, well, my immune system must be, like, fucked up. But then, the antibiotics killed the bacteria, and I was like, thank God for antibiotics. Then my doctor called me and was like, actually, the antibiotics didn't do shit. And I was like, whoa, I knew it. I'm goaded. <laughs> I'm... <laughs> I'm built different. Thank you, doctor. Th doctor, that's amazing news. The, the medicine you prescribed me didn't work? That's incredible. I'm not that bad at this, but I'm worse than you would expect. <laughs> I'm like, it's not my worst game. Definitely Penguin Pool Party is my worst game. But I lose at this one more than I should. How did you shoot out at an angle there? That just doesn't make sense. It, just, it doesn't make sense. I was just, like, confused. I just didn't know what was going on. I, I was, like, confused. My head was not in the game. I I got I almost died last week, two weeks ago, I guess, now. I did almost die two weeks ago. Ryan, in four months, I almost died five months ago. Yeah, but, like, chat in ten years. Hey, when's Poison Mushroom coming back? Hey, when's Grey's Anatomy coming back? Two can play that game. Chat in a decade. Third, just a... 5,039 year old man asking me when I'm gonna play vertiginous golf again. I guess I shouldn't bite the hand that feeds, but <laughs> you know. <laughs> chat, chat when I'm actually on my deathbed, hopefully in my 110s. So, no Mombazu? Plan to drink plenty of clear liquids, starting with a clear liquid breakfast. I am excited, you know, starting the week after next, I should have some colonoscopy anecdotes. They're very insistent that I get a colonoscopy to see if I have ulcerative colitis. And I, you know what I think it is? Without being rude to the doctors, I think it's because every time I came into urgent care in the ER, they were like, well, it's probably ulcerative colitis. And I was like, I don't know, I think I have an infection. And then eventually, as we all knew would happen, I was proven right and it was an infection. Anyway, so they, um, they were like, no, dude, no, dude, we're the doctor, trust us. It's definitely ulcerative colitis or some other inflammatory bowel disease. So I think they're giving, and maybe this is a juvenile take, but I think they're giving me a punitive colonoscopy because they're mad that my diagnosis was right. That my armchair diagnosis of a bacterial infection was correct. So now they're like, well, guess what? We're going to give you a colonoscopy anyway. They're like, this will teach him. <laughs> he thinks he's so smart. Obviously, I'm joking. I have nothing but respect for the hardworking people in the medical industry and the ones even who aren't working that hard, to be honest. It's nothing but respect for my doctors. By the way, like, uh, thanks for asking. Uh, I'm all better. I still have to get that colonoscopy on, on Thursday. So I'm like, there's gonna like a late stream today, normal stream on Tuesday. Wednesday, I'm doing a whole stream without being able to eat anything after like eight in the morning or something like that. Thursday, I'm taking the day off because I got to get a damn colonoscopy. It's, a, it's been a wild couple of weeks here. Are you preparing for anal? Yeah, I, wanted, I, I solicited the colonoscopy privately, um, which I know a lot of people don't like to do in Canada because it gives the appearance of it being a, a two-tiered medical system. So I do apologize for that. But on the other hand, I wanted to make sure that there were no teeth up there. Bad joke. Wait, are you my doctor? I gotta say, my doctor is taking this colonoscopy stuff very seriously. They were like, did you get our email where we said, after last Thursday, you can't eat any whole grains? I was like, chill, lady, I'm on a cruise. It's island time. Why are you calling me? This shit is like $14 a minute. It cost me like 30 bucks just to not have you get a HIPAA violation. I had to verify like 17 pieces of my identity. Even a little bit of food can screw the whole operation up. I'm not gonna, I'm obviously gonna do the prep for my colonoscopy. I'm not gonna like just eat and be like, oh, my bad. Like, come on. What, if, but dude, if I cleaned out my whole colon and then like 10 hours before the procedure, what if I ate like a, like a joke food? What if I swallowed like a toy car or something like that? You think they get a kick out of that? <laughs> if I ate like a, if I swallowed a single McCain smile whole, 
you think they'd be like, they'd get two-thirds of the way up and be like, oh, look at that. They don't want you eating foods because of the anesthesia. Oh, yeah, that makes it like a lot more. You know what? I've decided I'm not going to eat anything. <laughs> <I'm gonna laughs> I've decided it's, I don't really want to uh, choke on my own uh, vomit and die during my colonoscopy. So I've decided all that stuff I said about um, eating a joke food right before... Uh, going into my colonoscopy that stuff was just like satirical or whatever didn't they tell you any of this before yeah but they not only here's the thing you want to talk to a doctor you can't talk to a doctor doctor wants to talk to you clear your damn schedule i mean they kind of like i guess they want to talk to me because of my health issues which is fair but like when i call the doctor they're like let me get back to you in six weeks my doctor called me left a voicemail I didn't reply, like, I didn't verify my identity on their online portal in, like, an hour. She left me another voicemail that was like, we really need you to do this. And I'm like, holy cow. So a little pushy much. I'm on a cruise right now. <laughs> I see how it is when you want something, I gotta clear my damn schedule. When I want something, it's like, don't call me unless you're dead. Stop. You stop. I'm not... <laughs> it's the truth, kind of. It's a... It's a... It's an extension of the truth. So the, I promise I'm not going to mind this bit for a hundred years. But my mom texted me yesterday and said, guess what? I had dinner with my ex-co-worker. And uh, he also told me that he had Campylobacter in like 2003 when he went to India. And get this, first he had to be hospitalized for 10 days, but also whenever he went to bed, he taped towels to his anus so that <laughs> when he shit himself in his sleep, he wouldn't shit the bed, I guess, completely. My but still God. probably Wait, so a little bit. <laughs> you didn't do that, yeah. you crapped the bed? No, I just woke up eight times a night. <laughs> like the when, when my stomach was real bad in 2017, I swear I had a day where I just like I just kept sleep like, like coming in and out of consciousness on the toilet. That's it was horrible. Yeah. Oh, that's fucked. He's gonna milk the colonoscopy for weeks. I don't. I mean, what is, what is there to talk about? You just starve for a day, and then you like fall asleep. I did wonder though, because like they they force well, force is a weird word to use in this situation. They tell you you have to have somebody to pick you up. If you don't have somebody to pick you up, they can't release you from the hospital, right? But like, what if you have no friends or family? Like, what do you... I, and I, I know that sounds like I'm just farming a Sag in chat or something like that, but there's people like that. There's people out there that like have nobody, but like, I don't think I was... I said, that, well, Kate asked me and I said, well, you probably just get like an Uber or something. Then she said, I don't think they would let an Uber take you because you could be like taken advantage of in your sedated state. And I was like, you know what? That's pretty true. So I don't know. You think there, I guess there's probably like medical transportation, like a hospital transfers or something like that. Or you could just call an ambulance and be like, oh, I'm really sick. Take me to the hospital closest to my house. And then you could like walk home or something. I don't know. I'm glad I don't have to worry about it. That's the streamer solution. Okay. You can also do it not sedated. Yeah, I was talking to my dad. He's, he's had a colonoscopy done. And he was like, they, he didn't say he didn't get sedated. He said it like this. They wouldn't sedate me. So I don't know if he was begging for the sedation, but they wouldn't give it to him. But like, apparently, I don't know. Or maybe they were worried about like complications or something. But don't they just put a finger in your butt? That's, um, I forget the name of that test. That's different. That's for, they check your prostate to see... If you're cool. <laughs> it has a different name, though. I, f I forget the name of the test. Colonoscopy. There's, it's like the James Webb, man. They're going up. Wait, what if you'd use the James Webb telescope to take a picture of someone's, like, inside of someone's butthole? Would you see what it looked like 14 billion years ago? I'd love to know. Most scientifically literate streamer. I'll make the clip headline for you. I don't think it's going to fit. It's a camera, right? Like, they're making them pretty small these days. I got, like... Two of them on my, I don't I might even have three of them on my phone. I don't, I don't look at the back of it too much. You know what's funny as well? I'm not supposed to drink anything that's not a clear liquid, but they do say it's okay to have coffee as long as you don't put milk or cream in it. Coffee, not a clear liquid at all, but I have to imagine that they probably had people come in for their colonoscopy like grumpy as hell at, uh, you know, 1230. 
after lunch. They hadn't had coffee in like 40 hours. And then they said, you know what? We're gonna have, uh, we're gonna make an exception for this. Coffee makes you poop though, so it's probably fine. Yeah, but so does like the laxative um, that I have to get at the pharmacy. I have to drink, I, I, I haven't gotten it yet. Like I'm getting it this afternoon. If you've never had a colonoscopy, which you, I had, I've never had until after tomorrow, you have to drink four liters of it <laughs> in, in like, I don't know how fast you have to do it, but the recommendation says uh, do it in, like drink one full glass every 15 minutes. And I'm like, holy cow, man. I'm not worried, I know how this sounds. I'm not worried about the taste of the laxative. I'm not even worried about all the pooping, because again, like I already went through it for the, you know, the infection in the first place that precipitated the need for the colonoscopy to begin with. So I like, I'm not sweating that too much. It triggered my poison reflex. We, we, we have a poison reflex as human beings? By the way, I'm gonna say, I'm not concerned about the anesthesia. I've been anesthetized before for my hydrocelectomy. So I, I'm honestly looking forward to it. I'm sure it's gonna be like some of the best sleep I've had in a while. But they do say, and, and this is just, it just concerned me, okay? They said, you'll be placed under general anesthetic and should have no memory of the procedure. Now, what I think a lot of people would have trouble with is that should. What I have trouble with is the memory part. Because just because you don't remember something happening doesn't mean it didn't happen. So in my head, I'm like, I think I know what they meant. But at the same time, <laughs> is there going to be like 30 to 45 minutes of me feeling a pinching sound in or a, a pinching feeling in my colon? that's very unpleasant, and then uh, falling asleep, waking up, and being like, oh, is it already over? Because that's still trauma that I underwent. Oh, they hit you with the, M the MIB Neuralizer. Okay, fair enough. I'm not worried about it. I'm, I, like I said, because whatever, it's just, you know, I can deal with that. I'm telling you, the colonoscopy is nothing compared to uh, the feeling of your legs slowly going septic. <laughs> I, stop giving me games with fruit, because I, like, I'm mid-fast. It's been 90, no, it's been almost 120 minutes. Holy cow, I got so distracted because I was doing so well. I'm gonna drink like 1500 calories worth of apple juice today, for sure. Nice fast. Well, it's not a fast, I just, I can only consume clear liquids like apple juice and coffee. Oh, it's, that, not only is it allowed, it's encouraged. It's also technically not a fast because um, I have to drink four liters of medical grade laxative. Coffee is clear. I don't know, dude, like I'm just going by the instructions. It said you can have coffee with as long as it has no cream or milk in it. Coffee is clear. What the hell are you talking about? Coffee is clear. Yes, many people are pointing out alcohol is clear. Um, I'm just gonna tell you that like, I think you have a problem. I think that's kind of like a warning sign. I don't think you should be like, oh, clear liquids. You know what would be awesome is like, let's get hammered on straight vodka or a vodka coffee cocktail like the night before a medical procedure. I think you got a, you got a, a huge problem. Nice surprise for the doctor. I think the doctor would know, man. It's called Everclear. The only, I, I bought a bottle of Everclear once when I, I went to America as like a literally a 21.1 year old. After we drank the bottle over the course of a few days, we lit a match and held it up to the lip of the bottle and watched all the alcohol that was uh, on the edge of the bottle that had remained uh, immediately light on fire, vaporize and then disappear. And that was the most entertaining part of the whole endeavor. That's the best part. I, I was like, you know what? That's pretty cool. And then you smoke that shit. <laughs> being a dad means I'm not a human being with a fucking prostate anymore. Hello gamers, I am alive. Feeling good, Fe like actually feeling completely fine. Ate a lot yesterday after the colonoscopy. I made a, a huge mistake though. So right after the colonoscopy, went to McDonald's. 10 piece fries, Coke Zero, the classic. It, it, I'm not a doctor. But whenever I'm either hungry or not feeling that well, it's what I prescribe myself. And can I tell you something? 100% hit rate. Never in my life, as an adult at least, have I ever eaten that meal 
and been like, I feel worse. Every time I eat it, I'm like, I feel amazing. Now, because I, I had, I don't want to say starved, like it was like a huge endeavor, but because I hadn't eaten in like 30 hours, about two hours after the McDonald's, I got hungry again. Had a little, I had some Kanaka broad in the house, had some Kanaka broad. Kate said, what do you want for dinner? You know, you didn't eat any dinner yesterday, so maybe you can choose what to eat for dinner. I said, you know what? That pizza you got yesterday looks so delicious. What if we go like order in from a place where I can get like a pizza and you can get something that's not a pizza because you had pizza last night. She said, that sounds great. I ate a bunch of pizza I, and I think maybe I overdid it a little bit, but still, I, I, I feel like I'm probably calorie neutral right now. Like I feel like it, if you look at it over the it, 24 hours, I've probably had 4,000 calories. In 48 hours, though, I've also had 4,000 calories. So I think I got, I, I, I managed to bring myself back to, back to the baseline. There's not really anything to say about the, the colonoscopy. Like, there's no arc, okay? Well, I mean, I guess there is. <laughs> it's sw I mean, it was, it was like a 24-hour thing. I'm also, can I tell, and I don't even mean this in like a, a, a judgmental way at all. Quite the opposite. I was surprised how many people had had colonoscopies. I'm like the only person that I know IRL that is uh, had a colonoscopy in my age group. And yet, uh, like online, there were thousands of people who were like, yeah, when I had to do this, I'm like, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, honestly, thank you so much for the, for the well wishes, because otherwise I might have been like, this colonoscopy is going to be um, like a real endeavor. But instead, everybody was just like, the prep kind of sucks, but the colonoscopy itself is not that bad. In terms of the colonoscopy, okay, so the, 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 anecdotally speaking, I had to go to the pharmacy and pick up the industrial laxative that you're supposed to uh, drink all of before the colonoscopy. I looked around the pharmacy in the laxative section, found a little bottle like this big of what I thought was what the doctor wanted me to get. I checked the prescription, it's not really a prescription, it's just instructions. I checked the bottle. I was like, some of these ingredients match up. But I said, you know what, just to be sure, just to be sure, let me talk to the pharmacist to make sure that this is right. So I brought this little bottle up to the pharmacist and I showed her what my doctor told me and she's like, oh no, you don't want that. You want this? And then she reached under the counter and pulled out like an industrial jug of antifreeze like that you would buy from Canadian Tire or Home Depot or something like that and she's like you want this and I was like okay and then she had the audacity she was like do you still want that little bottle and I was like no I think this will be sufficient thank you then so the the laxative you buy is not even liquid it's powder and then they tell you very specifically when you get home fill the jug with four liters of lukewarm water do not use cold but then immediately put it in the fridge because if you try to drink it lukewarm, it'll taste like poison. So I filled this jug with lukewarm water, put it in the fridge, and then, I mean, like, from that point onwards, it, on, it, in big, bold letters, it says, do not use cold water. Probably, I guess it's like a, you know, it's not as good of a, a solvent, right? So the powder won't dissolve, which makes perfect sense. I've taken undergraduate level chemistry and even passed and got the credit so I can, you know, say that with authority, I think. I don't remember, it, it, it was not Move a Call, although I love the names. I think this one was called Colite or something like that. Like, it, it's, I don't know, I guess it's coal for colon and light because it tastes like pure salt because it's filled with uh, electrolytes so that you don't screw up your body's uh, homeostatic equilibrium by drinking four liters of water in two hours. <laughs> and then, <laughs> so it, it's, it has like a... Uh, a, a good balance of ions so you like don't die or you know start leaking potassium in your brain or something like that but anyway second worst part of the colonoscopy drinking four liters of that in four hours it was the i'm i the the problem the first glass i was like the taste is bad but whatever it's just liquid then you realize you gotta drink 10 glasses of it in uh in four hours so you got to drink like a glass every 20 minutes and you start to realize like it's actually not the taste man it's the fact that 
Like I, I was using a metal straw because they, they said a straw makes it taste not so bad. If you have like a metal straw in an iced coffee and you pull like, you know, you, you with your diaphragm, you pull as hard as you can on the iced coffee, you can drain half of it in a single pull. With the uh, coal light, you pull like as hard as you can and then the glass comes down like two centimeters every single time. Like you've got to do like nine full chugs to get to the bottom because it's so viscous. Like it, it's like drinking the, I don't even know. I, I, don't, I don't have an analog. It's like, you know, the, the, the plastic you use to laminate uh, like a business card or something like that. It's like that. So that's the second worst part because every glass just gets worse. But, it, you know, I, I didn't throw up. The, and by the way, and th this is the next part. I'm also not trying to say don't get a colonoscopy. Quite the opposite. I want, like, if you have to get a colonoscopy, don't procrastinate. The procedure itself is actually fine. You have to drink four liters of something that tastes bad. Don't be a baby. Like, you know, it's not worth dying for. But anyway, the, the part that came after chugging the laxative, not that bad. And I, not to steal valor, everybody was like, you wait till what comes next. What comes next is four hours to six hours of on and off bathroom time where I just played Super Auto Pets on my phone. That's not a, I, after what we did uh, with the infection where I was basically doing that but also felt like I was going to pass away. That was just another day at the office for me. That's no big deal. I was grinding. The actual, and, and now we're going like quick into, I mean, this is like a, uh, uh, we're starting in media res. The worst part of the colonoscopy was about three seconds long, and it was when I was bare ass on the examination table, and I was talking to the doctor about, um, you, she's like, you know, do you smoke? Do you have diabetes? Blah, 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 and I answered all her questions, and then she was like, okay, you seem like a healthy guy. We're gonna give you the normal amount of sedative. She tells the, the nurse or the anesthesiologist, like, here's how much sedative we're gonna give him. It's conscious sedative, so I'm, I'm awake the whole time. I, they didn't put me to sleep, they just, uh, you know, they um, sedated me a little bit so I, I was more relaxed. And then, I felt nothing, like, no, because it's very subtle, the, the sedative, but before it hit, with no warning whatsoever, I felt like some pressure around my butthole followed by my doctor putting two fingers inside, like she had rubbed like Vaseline around the outside, then with no warning, shoving two fingers through and doing like one of these. At which point, like as soon as it happened, my, my brain was like, I'm in danger. Like what the hell is this feeling? It felt like it, like I had been attacked, like I was in an abattoir or something like that, and I'd been applied to like uh, to a meat hook or something. Um, and then the sedative hit, and before I knew it, the camera was going in, and she honestly, it was, the closest thing I could equate it to was it was like an uncomfortable haircut. Like I, we were having small talk, and then I could see, you know, she's working the the hose up there. And then she's asking me, like, how's your summer been so far? And I was like, oh, that was really, uh, it's been a lot of fun. We actually just went on a cruise last week. And they're like, oh, where did you go? And I was like, oh, we went to Alaska. And then I could see, like, this, you know, like, pink and, I don't know, like, tan, pink and beige uh, tube that they're going up. And then she's like, oh, look at that. And then it was, uh, it, it was actually, like, I mean, I felt some pressure. And it, there were times where I was like, it's a little uncomfortable. I was never like, it, it's painful, but they were, it was a little uncomfortable at times. Before I knew it, it was basically over. And then that was, the, you know, I went and sat down in a, a comfortable chair and like 15 minutes later, they're like, you're good to go. That's about it. But I, there's some irony here. I'm, I'm hesitant to even say this because it, it, it just ties even more into the medical system complaining I've been doing before. The reason I had to get a colonoscopy is because despite all of my symptoms looking like a bacterial infection when I got, di well, just pre-diagnosis. The doctor that I saw, who admittedly saved my life, probably, was like, you must have Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, because if you didn't, then you wouldn't be pooping this much. So she basically made me get a colonoscopy, 
Then when I got the colonoscopy, the doctor was like, everything looks good, except there's a little inflammation in here, but it's probably just a remnant of that severe infection you had. So come back in three months. So again, even after the diagnosis of the bacterial infection, even after culturing the bacteria, fully genome sequencing it so that we know that it was bacteria, it's antibiotic resistant, etc., etc. They were still like, nah, dude, I promise you it's ulcerative colitis. Get a colonoscopy. Doctor was like, everything looks normal except for like, this one little part here that is just inflamed from possibly what you went through during the infection. So you really didn't, the subtext was like, you didn't really need to be here today. You could have just come in October instead. And uh, I'll see you in October. So I don't know. Like I still, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to have gotten a, a colonoscopy and had people go like, or had the doctor go like, everything looks pretty normal up here. And honestly, I'm not sweating it that much. Like the, the prep was annoying, but it's not like, it's not that bad. It didn't even ruin my, it ruined the day before the colonoscopy a little, but it didn't ruin the yesterday. Yes, but I will say I'll probably take the 8 a.m. appointment uh, next time rather than starve for three hours in the morning unnecessarily. How long was the queue? Sibs, this is not a joke. The entire colonoscopy was like less time than a Woods queue. And I'm not joking. The, the procedure was about as long as three Tarkov raids. But the, the, like the, from showing up at the office, filling out the questionnaire, changing into the gowns, yada, 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 then being released, that was like an hour and a half. The actual part where the camera was inserted into my colon and, and beyond, that was like, li literally like 18 minutes. It was nothing. And beyond? Oh, I don't know, they took like a, like a biopsy of some tissue. I was, I, like, I, I felt like I'd had three glasses of Prosecco by the time they took it. I didn't feel anything. However, um, the nurse was like, so just so you know, tomorrow you might feel a little pinch. And then she pointed, like, here. She's like, you might feel a little pinch right there. And I was like, how high up did you guys go? And wouldn't you know, last night I'm laying down and I feel the pinch right there. And I'm like, holy cow, you were like... But then I was thinking like, you know, the col I've seen the the an anatomical diagrams of the colon. It goes like it starts with a big loop. Anyway, how was the sedative? I mean, it was no fun, which is fine, but I was relaxed. I I thought that it wasn't affecting me at all, but then I remember like I was saying some fairly like dumb shit while the camera was in there. Like I forget a lot like, I have a fuzzy memory of the procedure. But I definitely, like, the doctor said something and I replied with, like, a joke and laughed a little bit. And I said, sorry, I'll try not to laugh. And then after, like, because I didn't want to clench. And then all three of the staff who were in the room were like, they, did, they just iced me. They didn't say anything. And then, after the doctor was talking to me about, like, what they saw... I just rambled. I was like, yeah, I told the doctor earlier that I don't think it's like any inflammatory bowel disease because I looked up the symptoms online and I didn't have any of the symptoms online. Um, it seemed like everything was really like boiled down to the bacterial infection that I had, but they made me get a colonoscopy anyway, just to rule out any other kind of differential diagnosis. And like that, I can see the doctor going like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then as soon as I finished, I, I knew even under the sedative that I was like, I'm talking too much, but I can't figure out how to wrap it up. And I, I was, she was just nodding politely. And then she was like, yeah, okay. Well, uh, we're gonna see you in October. So thanks a lot for today. And then she just basically walked out. I'm sure she gets it all the time. Like the people are not of perfect sound mind when they're affected by the sedative, but you know, still. Worst part, the five uh, seconds when I was not well sedated when they shoved two fingers up my butthole and did a ring around the rosy. But I also, here's the thing, I was like, why didn't they warn me? And I'm like, you know what? I think I understand why they didn't warn me. Because if they warned you, you would tighten up. If they just do it, I don't know if this goes against the Hippocratic Oath, but if they just do it, then you're, you know, they have to do it. <laughs> it's, it's worth looking up at least or something. That's how you lose a finger? Won't you get surprised and tighten up by reflex? Yeah, but if the doctor's digits are already in there, I don't think you're squeezing them out. At least I wasn't after a month of dealing with 
simultaneous salmonella and campylobacter. The second worst part was the taste of the prep, which is not even that bad. You'll get over it. And the third worst part was the fast. The fasting was like, I was really hungry, but that's about it. How much of this makes it into the YouTube video? None, just because, you know, it, that's a Twitch exclusive. We made YouTube exclusives for eight years. Now we're making some Twitch exclusives. Slash marker just came. You should have streamed it. I mean, honestly, the thing is, like, it wasn't... The actual... I, I'm not a baby. I was gonna say I'm a sicko, but, like, I'm just gonna steal some valor here. I'm gonna say it. I'm not a baby. When I get, like, a medical procedure done, I don't mind watching. You ever give blood? They, they force, uh, like, a little towel over your vein so that you can't see the needle in your arm? I understand why they do it, but sometimes I'm, like, a little curious, and I'm like, what's going on in here? I don't mind. So they had the camera like in a place where I could see it. I was watching the, the process, but it's not that exciting. It's just a lot of like, you know, you're going down a tube, you're going down a tube. I, I, the only time that it was anxiety inducing is when they came to like a, a turn and you're like, I'm gonna feel like some pressure in just a second. And then you're like Anyway, it was, it was completely fine. Hey, I'm going to Iceland in a couple of days. Any recommendations? It depends, Iceland is very, Cool, and that's not meant as a pun intended. I, I would rather you didn't take it as pun intended, honestly. Uh, if you're staying in Reykjavik for like four to five days, you can go to everything that's recommended, which is actually exactly what you want in like a tourism destination. Go to go to the like go to TripAdvisor, go to like the five best restaurants for dinner, and go to like the five coolest restaurants for lunch. And then there's like three museums. Uh, a cool looking church and a, a bakery that opens at 4 a.m. which you might be jet lagged to begin with and then hopefully um, you know maybe rent a car and drive around the country a little bit it is very expensive it's like insanely expensive <laughs> that's the other aspect feels good to be drinking some water again because here's the thing when you drink the four liters of colonoscopy prep juice they tell you make sure you drink a lot of fluids so you don't get dehydrated. What the hell are you talking about? I can't drink any more fluids. I drank... I drank four liters of goo to clean me out. My stomach is full and empty at the same time. And my doctor was like, hey, she said you did the prep well, but there's a little bit of residue in here. What did you eat yesterday? I said I didn't eat anything. I just drank apple juice. And she said, what kind of apple juice? Then I told her simply apple, which literally has one ingredient, apples. And she's like, oh yeah, we didn't mean that kind of apple juice. We meant like the, the cheap kind that's like water and ascorbic acid or something and bronze food coloring. I'm like, well, maybe I didn't say this. Maybe you should put that shit on the damn form. I literally bought a juice that I, was just liquid apple and I'm getting admonished for following your instructions. That you should have interpreted what we meant. It's madness, anyway. And then she cried, and then she subbed to the channel, to be clear. I had a colonoscopy, don't, I, I'm not gonna act like I'm a, a soldier for um, men's health, but like, I, I don't, I wanna normalize the idea that getting a colonoscopy is not weird, because like, if you procrastinate getting a colonoscopy when your doctor tells you to get one, like, you're possibly gonna risk, like, serious and semi-preventable, like, health outcomes. I don't know why I was so cagey with my wording there, but either way, like, it's it's genuinely not weird. It's actually, like, I, I was putting myself into my, like, gastroenterologist shoes, which seemed fair, considering she was putting herself, well, her camera at least, into my butt. But, either way, I'm sure that for her is like the most boring day of all time. Brr, oh, like she comes to work in the morning and is like, Oh, I can't wait for my like one o'clock to be done so I can leave early. Like she's just, she doesn't think it's weird at all. She's just, she's doing this shit all day, every day. If she doesn't think it's weird, why should I think it's weird? Also, the other thing that I, I guess I would add is maybe I, I'm a little bit more like biased for not finding this medical stuff weird, because I also, I mean, I had testicular surgery in the 11th grade. So I was like, you know, this, you kind of, when you go to a doctor as a high schooler and they shine a flashlight next to your ball, and then you go get an ultrasound and the, to find out whether or not it's testicular cancer and the ultrasound tech is like your classmate's mom 
and then they refer you to a urologist and you got you get your scrotum incised upon and then a sack of fluid like removed from it and then stitched back up and you miss a week of school like you just you're just like dude it's just the it's just flesh you know yeah the urologist is your classmate's dad and you're like oh my god you guys work in the same industry and you're like you know you get the idea they did surgery on a grape i i was such a nerd in high school too that like i didn't actually take the whole week off from school, which is funny. After two days, I said, I'm feeling good enough to go back. So I went back. But yeah, I mean, like, honestly, I, I don't know. I think I owe it to you to be, like, open about medical procedures, at least on that level. Like, if I was getting a height extension, I would never tell you. You would just be like, holy cow, when did he go from 6'8 to 6'11? But like a colonoscopy, yeah. If you gotta get it done, but you're like, oh, I'm, I don't know, I'm a little weird about it. Okay, just fucking, I mean, it's, it's not gonna be the best day on the planet, but just nut up and do it. You know how pathetic it is that you'd rather just die? This is the stupidest equation of all time. It is also, you. All, I think that it helps to like, oh my God, it's Batista. It helps to remember that the fact that colonoscopies actually like exist is a medical marvel. Like 50 years ago, you would just die. And then like 30 years ago, they could probably do it, but I bet it sucked like a lot more. Although that is also to say that probably in like 30 years, it might suck a little less. Are you excited to get one at 50? I'm excited to get one in October, my brother in Christ. I'm 22 years old. Can you guess how many colonoscopies I've had? I feel like it's like, if you've had one colonoscopy at 22, you've probably had four colonoscopies in your life. Because I feel like it's it's like feast or famine. Like a lot of people out there having zero colonoscopies and a lot of people, the people that get one colonoscopy are likely to get more. Like damn, share a bit, save some colonoscopies for the rest of us. Dude, even like the gastroenterologist that I went to, she was like trying to make me feel a little guilty. She was like, we fit you in because this was like an urgent referral, but otherwise you wouldn't have a colonoscopy until like December. Like we're booking around the holiday season. And I'm like, this can't be true. There can't, I, I just don't believe that there's that many people getting colonoscopies. You would hear about it more often. It's a trend. That's I, probably, you know what? They're like, dude, colonoscopy before pink sauce, zero out of 10. Colonoscopy with pink sauce, 10 out of 10. We do 30 colonoscopies a day in my small hospital. Well, if you're doing so many colonoscopies a day, why is there such a backlog? I think they're just giving them out for sport at this point. That's probably not true. There are a lot of old people. That's definitely true. The healthcare system is very ageist. If you're young, they're like, get to the back of the line. I was telling this story to Kate last night. She didn't believe me, but anyone who's had this experience will be like, that sounds about right. When I was uh, 20, I'm dead. Yep, probably can't fit one more. When I was uh, 22 or 23, I came back from Korea and I said, I, I had like lumps on the side of my neck. So I was like, I'm dying. I, I made an appointment for a full body physical with my family doctor. My, when I went in for the appointment, this was a, a beautiful time because it was, uh, I was able to get an appointment within like two weeks, okay? So two weeks later, I go in and I say, uh, well, first I say, hello doctor. And she says, hey, just for, today, just for today, I'm gonna have a medical student do the examination. I said, okay, whatever. And then my doctor left the room and I said, um, hey, I have these lumps in my neck that I'm worried about. She literally went like this. She went like for a, a, a millisecond. She was like, and then she was like, hmm, it's probably just fat. First off, rude. Secondly, can you approximate your level of confidence, your confidence interval on whether or not it's fat? Because if it's like 99.1, then sure, I trust you. If it was like 55.45, I think I'd like to have some like biopsies taken or something like that. And then I said, okay, well, also, uh, I'm here for a physical. And then she said, typically we don't do physicals on young men unless they present with like symptoms. 
And I said, okay, doctor, thank you for your time. Fucking see you never. Um, appreciate it. What a, what, a good, what a good use of taking half a day off work and sitting around in like the waiting room and like having you look at my chart and filling out all these forms and questionnaires and stuff like that. And then I'm like, I mean, I, here's the thing. I think everybody knows like the problem with, well, one of the problems with the healthcare industry is that if you go in early to see if something's wrong, they tell you like, what are you doing here? You're not dead. So you wait until it becomes like an acute serious issue and then nobody, like, you, when it was easily treatable, they didn't want to see you because there were people with very serious presenting problems. Now that you have a serious pre presenting problem, they're like, why didn't you come to see us earlier? But you can't go to the doctor for preventative medicine because there's too many people that have serious issues, which means your preventative issue becomes a serious issue and you're constantly, like, pushing the, like, you're just, it's not a, it's a mixed metaphor, but you're robbing Peter to pay, to pay Paul. Robin Dick to, to pay balls. Exactly. Robin, Robin this wizard to unslap my balls. I was like, honestly, if you go to the, if you're forced to go to the emergency room for like an internal medicine problem, it's fucked up that they, you're jealous of people that have like broken legs. Cause you're like, I bet the doctor could fix that shit. The doctor is going to call you in and be like, your leg's broken. Fucking go down to this room, get a cast and here's some painkillers. That's what we were saying, like, if, if Kate's dad can't get, uh, like, his neurological issue looked at because our family doctor's on vacation, and you can't go see a neurologist without a referral, um, but you can't get a referral from anybody but your family doctor because urgent care is like, I can't give you a referral for some reason, then, like, the next step is that he has to just call an ambulance and be like, I'm having a heart attack. And then when he gets to the hospital, be like, oh, my heart feels a little bit better, but can you check out, like, my arm? My arm's a little messed up right now. And then Kay was like, next time you have to go to the hospital, you should do that, but like with your hair. Just every time you go to the e e ER, be like, I know this is hard to believe, but I woke up and all my hair fell out. They're going to put you at the front of the line and be like, this guy's near death. And then when you get to the front of the line, be like, yeah, all my hair fell out. Also, I've had diarrhea for two weeks straight. They're going to be like, we got to get to the bottom of the hair thing. And then you're like, no, I'm actually he's kind of starting to like it. But the diarrhea thing is like really is <laughs> is really putting the damper on my quality of life right now. Someone said it might be illegal, which is also you admitting that it might not be illegal. I didn't sign shit. Anyway, I apologize. I'm really I'm not anti healthcare industry. I'm just a little bit annoyed that it seems like nobody wants to treat you. And instead, they're just like, you shouldn't be here. You should be at like this place. Then when you get to that place, they're like, well, did you get the form? And you're like, what form? And then they hand you like some shit fresh off the Xerox. It's hot like a fresh Krispy Kreme donut. And they're like, have you ever had a sore throat? And then you got to like, they basically watch you lie to them. You're like, no, I've never had a runny nose in my entire life. It's never happened. Because if I tell you that I've ever had a runny nose, you're not going to let me come in here and get my diarrhea looked at. So of course I've never had a runny nose. You wanna get out of here? Hey! Move at me! Congratulations. You are being rescued. Please do not resist. Explain leg rot? Well, my thinking is that my simultaneous Campylobacter salmonella infection led to like the infection spreading because it wasn't tackled with an appropriate amount of acumen in time. And it started to lead to like, I don't know, some blood poisoning that, that spread the infection to my leg. However, my gastroenterologist and my internal medicine specialist still are convinced that I have Crohn's disease, which comes with a, um, well, they, I guess they're not convinced because we have to go back for that next colonoscopy, but it, it, there's apparently a, a side effect of Crohn's disease called like a, it, erythema something something that gives you like red nodules on your leg. And I was like, these are not red nodules. I have the stanky leg. Like this not, these are not like 
bulbs that are like hard. I'm like, my leg is turning red and then it's like itchy for like a day and then it's like dying. <laughs> yeah, erythema nodosum. Probably not how it's actually pronounced, so I apologize for that. But like I'm still, even though the infection is over and all of my symptoms are gone completely, people are like, it's, well, the doctors are like, they ref okay, I'm going off too much. But they're like, no, 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 no. I know when we gave you the antibiotics, it completely cured you. However, I'm, they're so attached to their hypothesis of it being Crohn's disease that I, I got to get my whole freaking body with the, the snake going through every orifice in order to convince them that it's not Crohn's. And then they're like, oh, your colonoscopy, it looked good, but there's just one part that was inflamed that we want to check out in three months. And I'm like, yeah, it was inflamed because I had the infection. And that was even more inflamed because you poked it with a damn snake, man. But I genuinely don't think I have Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. Because you know when you have like, you go on WebMD and you have like three symptoms for something, like a disease with a one in 100,000 uh, incidence rate, and you're like, I definitely have that. This is the exact opposite. Every symptom I've ever looked up for ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, I'm like, I literally have none of them. I have zero. But the... <laughs> I'm not trying to be rude to the doctors because maybe they'll surprise me and they'll do the next colonoscopy and be like, yeah, holy cow, you got both of them. But instead, like they, I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's all related to the infection. They're like, yeah, whatever. Well, your doctor ordered this, so we're going to do it anyway. And then whatever. I don't mind. It's good that I'm not a baby. You want to give me another colonoscopy? Go ahead. Give me another colonoscopy. See if I care. Lab results came in. I don't know how to say this, but you're bald. I mean, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Again, maybe I got something wrong with me. I would rather know than not know, which is why I'm going through the diagnostics, but just complaining about it endlessly. But um, I really think that what I think I got a nightmare infection that was so bad that the doctors refuse to believe that it's just like the bacteria. They're like, this shit doesn't happen in the first world. As a result, there must be something more. And even as every test comes back negative, they're like, well, it couldn't have just been that you ate, like, raw pork off the spatula accidentally while you were cooking some quesadillas. <laughs> it had to be. Because no idiot on earth would do that. That's just, it's the dumbest thing we've ever heard. But test results are in. Turns out you suck. I still don't know what gave it to me. I was stoked my gastroenterologist said. She said, what do you think gave it to you? And I said, I don't know. And she said, yeah, usually that's the case. And she also, like, I'm, maybe this is copium. But she said, um, people always think that you have to, like, the milk has to smell sour or the, or the meat has to be raw. But actually, like, you can get uh, food poisoning pretty easily. I was like, thank you, doctor. I don't know if that's what happened here, but it makes me feel a little better. Then she did say viruses and bacteria rule the world. And I was like, whoa, whose side are you on? <laughs> anyway, time to... Um, stick two fingers into your anus and do a little fish hook maneuver and then we'll stick the camera up there and before you know it, the sedative is going to kick in. All right, see you in 20 minutes. <laughs> Feast or fast? Perform a ritual at your temple to declare a fast. Followers will not eat or be hungry for three days or feast. Throw a feast for your followers to refill their hunger and gain 25 faith. Dude, we're fasting for sure. Three day fast? Somewhere my gastroenterologist sm just smiled. I will say after doing a, a, my colonoscopy prep, I really d I don't understand. Well, I guess I'll eat this then. <laughs> I don't understand why people do a cleanse that takes like three weeks of just drinking like lemon juice with black pepper in it. Like, why don't you just go to the pharmacy and buy the laxative and you could be done in like 12 hours. Like, I don't, I don't think that it has any merit either way. But like, if you're gonna do it, why take three weeks to do it when you could do it in like, you know, six hours? Because it's extremely painful for you. For me, it was Wednesday. Does it not hurt to shit your guts out for 12 hours? People are actually like so dramatic. It wasn't that big of a deal. You just poop. Like you've been doing it probably every day since you've been alive. People are dramatic and yet you keep saying you almost died. That's not dramatic. People in the West just don't think it's normal for a 33-year-old man to get an infection so badly that it could have killed him. But my blood was infected with the bacteria. I was, I, like, people just, they don't want to believe it. 
If you if I could have given you my legs for a couple of days, you would have been like, you know what? He was closer to death than ever before in his life. Hey, guess what? I got another story. 8.35 this morning, I got a phone call. Normally, I don't pick up because it's just someone from another country telling me to give them $10,000 in Amazon gift cards um, because I haven't paid my taxes or something like that. This one on caller ID, it said Vancouver Hospital. So I said, let's pick it up. Uh, picked it up. Hey, uh, is this Mr. Letourneau? Uh, yes. Um, we're calling from the infectious disease department. Uh, we were oh, referred no. by your, your doctor. Just want to know how you're doing with that uh, Salmonella and Campylobacter infection. I said, um, I've been better since July. And they said, okay, we're going to cancel your appointment then. Didn't even know I was in the system. Apparently, if, if I had been left to my own devices, uh, this is when I would be getting treatment for my, uh, for my illness is three months after it resolved, four months after it started. What the hell? Crazy. I, almost, I slipped through the cracks. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You get a badge in the chat to identify you. You're my subscribers. Thanks for 72 months. Thank you for the gift subs, thank you for the bitch, thank you for the follows, thank you for the tips. Come over to my plate, baby, you're a wreck. That's an original.